ask anything. Okay. We're sound. Go on to tax or whatever. I couldn't care. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're HMRC's most wanted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, with HMRC's most wanted, Chris and Ben, the 19-year-old car flippers, if you've been hiding under a rock, you won't see these guys. But if you've been on TikTok, I'd probably say any time in the past, like six months, you will have seen these two <laughs> guys. So they specialize in selling dingers. And we're going to jump all into their business, all about sort of how they've grown on TikTok. But also, I want to go into like the mindset and stuff as well. Like you you two have both recently like, well, you've been in nine to fives and stuff as well. Yep. You're now out of it and you've got massive, massive plans with what you want to do. So we'll dive into that today and explore a bit about you both. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you for coming on, guys. Thank no, you. Thank you for having us. No, no, I think it's going to be a it's good a one. Sick uh, you don't yeah, get yeah. it like Dalo, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it's going to be, I think this one, I reckon we're going to, well, based on how long we've just been chatting before this, like, this could go on for a <laughs> <laughs> so, Buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start both of you right at the beginning. So you guys, I'm guessing, did you ever actually see the nine to five for you guys being a viable option? Did you ever think about going to university? What's your sort of thoughts on that? Right, so I'll start first because obviously you've got your, with your family, with uni and stuff yeah, like that, isn't it? Yeah, but like, you, go on, you go on first. For me, it was always, I always mentioned accounting. So we were yeah. both in set one in school. So we we're yeah. like the top set. So like it was either like accounting or got uni and stuff yeah. like that. I mentioned accounting to my parents when I was like 12 and they just stuck with it. Yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah he's going to be an accountant and yeah, just yeah. sort of ran with that and yeah. like was hoping for the best. Um, but like, and so did I, to be fair. And it was like age 14, 15, I started to question it a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I was more so like, surely we don't finish. Because obviously you, you see in the new, like you see all these big business owners that left school so early. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if they did, like how are they so successful? And you yeah, got yeah. an accountant on like 50 grand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it started to question it more and more. And then, yeah, I knew from then on, definitely but not wasn't the wasn't way. for you. Um, yeah. So uni was never an option for you? Never. Yeah, so I'm I'm from, like, both my parents did decent. Both of them went to a really good university. Brothers at university, slightly older than me. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, it's just fucking boring, to be honest. Like, I couldn't, I don't know, uni, it's just, whenever you look at someone and whenever you ask them why they go to uni, like, none of them actually have a clue why they've gone. For me, when I was at uni, like, the, I'd say 95% of my cohort were there just to, to fucking party. Literally, All yeah. it was for, and I was like, you could be doing this without racking up student debt at the same time. Yeah, like you're yeah. here for a lifestyle that you don't, like I get it, like maybe living in student halls first year, but like second year when everyone moves out, you could just get a flat where you mate yeah. and yeah, then just that, fucking go out to town and uh, jump in on the student night. Exactly that. That's, that's what I always <laughs> imagined. But yeah, anyway, I just, but it, yeah, but like back in the day, because of the influence from your parents, you were like, I'm going to be a music producer at uni because <laughs> like he was going to do a music producing course. Like, believe yeah, it yeah. or not, that's what that's. What uh, yeah, I think that was, I, fi I did, well, I, I've, I've played drums a lot in my life. Uh, yeah. That was always, side, yeah, 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 of course. But, nah, but <laughs> that's always, that's always been there. Um, but yeah, doing that, that was, that was what I enjoyed most at school. And I thought, yeah, let's do that. But I don't know, it got to, as it was I said, college, wasn't it? yeah, it got to, it got to college point. Uh, so I started thinking like my parents giving me advice, but I don't want to be in their shoes. And it's like, you've then got to start like questioning things. And then once you start questioning things, it just all goes. Yeah. And that's, I think as soon as you sort of, you've got that little bit of that little bit of light bulb moment where yeah. as soon as you start to question, you're pretty much done for in terms of being One able to view so. the nine to five as something that's going to be forever. Because I think with us, like we can be in completely different industries, but we know that, the potential within our industries that like, if we're our own bosses, we can go way further than well, any nine to five would ever take us. Definitely. So onto like, you went straight into, did you go straight into jobs? Cause I know that for example, you, Chris, you went into what is known as one of the most typical jobs for a young person to go mm -hmm. into. Do you want to jump on yeah. That? So like whilst I was at college, uh, again, money was, I always wanted money uh, when I was there. So I was working at Mackey's. And then I also had like a pot washing job at the side. So I'd be at college like full time. And then also them two jobs like part time, but it was like basically full time. Uh, quit. Most of my mates went to uni, DOSA jobs, just didn't want to go to. Yeah. I didn't really have it. I didn't really have it figured out because I wasn't really speaking to Ben at the time either. Uh, so it was, I was really lost. So I just went went to Mackey's, just went there full time. Yeah. Uh, and I quit there and I went to Amazon. But then at that point, this is when me and Ben started speaking to each other just about basic business. And that's where so we, we used to make like what? Yeah, we were mates all through school. Um, so always set one, always in the same friendship group. 
Um, but like when I left, so I went to college, the same college that Chris went to for about two weeks, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, cause I, I was, just, I got an apprenticeship in accounting. Yep. Um, and that was straight in school cause I was making money. And the reason why I said that, cause I was like, right to my mum and dad, I'm going to go into accounting cause I'm going to, if I get an apprenticeship in there from 16, I'm going to get the qualifications, get paid, but then I'm straight out of it as soon as I get into property yep. and stuff. Um, and, and business and like that was sort of them like holding on like yeah yeah yeah, yeah you'll leave eventually no yeah. one I, I knew I'd leave accounting very quickly yeah, yeah. they were just hoping that I'd just stay I, in it so I did um, accounting and finance at uni mm -hmm. and then so I went after my grad role I went into so it's merging and acquisition sort of like uh, corporate finance investment banking yeah you know? but I had to study for my chartered accountancy uh, qualification at the same time mm. and that was at the same time as building the businesses and stuff yeah. like that and Accounting is fucking horrific. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, I don't know how anyone can be passionate about that. <laughs> like, and the thing is as well, like, if you actually just go into it to be a, like a purebred accountant, mm -hmm. and let's say you've not got the goals of being a partner or being the goal of yep. having your own firm, you're going to get capped under six figures pretty exactly. much. Like the, the, and the amount of study and stuff you've got to do, like for me at uni, it was horrific. Like, I was like, right, I want to get first. I want to first. So I was like, I worked so fucking hard and then went, like, and this is... One of the things that like fucking shows you that like university exa exams are a scam. It's bullshit. Because I got a first at university in all my accountancy stuff and yep, full first first class honours, went to the firm where I was working in M&A, but then had to do the accountancy thing on the side. The first two accounting exams that you do are supposed to be like entry level. So for example, Chris, you're supposed to be able to pass them after doing six weeks education. Yeah. I failed both of them. Really? After getting a first at university. And- Yes, it was probably because I didn't study too hard because I was focused more on building aftermarket. Yeah. But still walking away with first class honours yeah, from exactly university, that. you'd expect you could pass the bare minimum mm. that someone who has never done accountancy in their life should be able to do. Like, and that is like, for me, was another thing where it's like, I got so fucking stressed about that. Cause I was like, why? Like, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, that went like, you put yourself under that pressure for a job like that. That's never going to get you to a point where I'm earning a mil a year or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's not fucking worth it. There's so much many easier ways that we can do it. And we can, like, today we'll talk about how you guys are doing it and, like, yeah. how you've been able to get to go from, like, that hourly rate to a point where you can do a couple of grand a day, 500 quid a day, whatever it may be. But it, it sort of comes down to your input and output versus sitting behind a desk and just being a monkey. Yep, exactly <laughs> that. So, I said any better. What with you, with you guys? So you, and then you went into call center, didn't you? Yeah, so I went into accounting. Um, so I was 16 into there. Um, and I was there until COVID hit. And I um, and I was made redundant. Like it's it's quite weird how it happens because not apprentices don't really get made redundant. Like it's oh, cheap as cheap labor. How did that happen? Just a COVID. And then oh, they were just coming and was just like, oh, yeah, made redundant. Yeah. Like, was there no like job off to come back once it was a Nothing, done? nah. So I feel like it was pro it was definitely a blessing in disguise. I personally think it was meant to happen. Like yeah. again, the, the likelihood of an apprentice getting sacked or made redundant yeah. is low. So I feel like it, was, it happened on purpose anyway. Um, and then it was brutal because for like a year, no one was hiring. No one was, especially around near us. Um, and I was too young as well. So I wasn't 18 for a full-time thing. So I was like, what do I do? It was it was COVID. Um, so that was where I was just researching, learning and everything like that. Um, and I got EE when I turned seven, like 18. Yeah, I was 18 when I got EE. And then, yeah, went from there. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even get accepted in there. Like when he, when he said about after <laughs> he fucking had my interview, he's like, "No, sorry, you don't meet the requirements." What the fuck are the requirements to get? <laughs> yeah, and I was just gonna say like, like when you go on the customer service to some like phone networks or any sort of big organisation, like, terrible, it's so bad, it's fucking stupid. You should have seen the people I was like, the, honestly, the, the the whole like people I was working with, the look qualifications. He was ten times higher than most of them there. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's just a G on the phone. I think that's what <laughs> I'm just too good. They were like, the you, are, you are too good. Like we can't have you, are you? You'll yeah. be making too yeah. many sales. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and that's what what you touched on then about like COVID being a blessing in disguise. I know COVID was really bad for a lot of people, yeah. but I think for like, even like me, like with the business, like, and with you guys, like it, act and so many other people that I know, so much good actually came out of COVID with Many people percent. actually thinking like sort of thinking outside the box and yeah. then knowing that, and I think it reminded everyone like you losing job that it, your job's never like nine to five is known as being stable, but mm. it's still always going to be the risk that you get something like that happens. Definitely. And, you, like if but if you can build something for yourself and have solid foundations, if COVID comes around again, I know that my business will probably double. Definitely. Like it's like the, if you put everything right in place, like 
we're, we're going to be future proof from it. And you know what it is? I think I am quite grateful as well because not that I would have got caught in the system. I feel like I still had the goals and ambitions anyway. So it was a short term plan being in work, but it, 10x the speed of it because yeah. it was like it actually went right shit you're gonna have to actually take action on it yeah now. yeah it's all good having these ideas of doing it yeah. but when you're actually gonna do and that's something the, what you said then that's the biggest thing i always push people to do like take action like mm -hmm. we get dms like all the time like, i've been watching your content for two years now and i'm just like why yeah oh it's two the years. same same fucking ones where it's like i'm gonna start a new year start, start yeah, a new yeah. year i'm gonna start car flipping in summer like fuck me yeah like what but, but just like worst case scenario what's gonna happen mm. like even <laughs> And like, I think it's even when people like get to, let's say, for example, some guys get to your level and then they think, right, I'm going to leave the nine to five. But then they're dead paranoid about leaving the nine to five. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, right, if the, let's say you're young and you've, I get it if you've got like kids and like a mortgage and stuff like that. But if you're young yeah, and you don't have that risk? many responsibilities, like it doesn't matter. Like yeah, as long as you've risk. got a bit of a safety net money wise to carry you through, which you should have if you've been doing a side hustle mm -hmm. for long enough, then you're going to get to that point where, like if it all goes tits up, you're going to find another nine to five. Mm -hmm. It's not like after you've started your own business and let's say it fails, you get blacklisted for every nine to five. Yeah. So you're going to have to go on benefits. Like that's sort of like the attitude just people seem to have. So easy. And, and I remember it's not like, it's just the fact that we know like we can make money from it. So I think at the time we didn't really have that much money, but uh, I remember I was at this, this office job. I got sacked and most people would have just been like crying and yeah. that. But I was like, I was on the phone and I was like, I oh, guess what's just, just happened. You've been sacked, haven't you? We've both, like, pissed both pissing ourselves. And it's like, but yeah, like I couldn't give a fuck though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But and it's just like, it's just on the next one. The amount yeah. of employment that's out there, I couldn't care. And it was just that easy. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. but that's what I mean. I feel like, what is the, the risk at this age anyway? Yeah, like, yeah. What actually is the risk? Yeah, exactly. Like, There's nothing. Who is bothered? And it annoys me when people at our age mention about, oh, I don't have the money to start yet. <sighs> what are you spending your money on? Yeah, like, yeah. Genuinely, what are you spending your money on? You've got maybe bored that you're paying to your parents or yeah. rent. Yeah. Apart from that, you're getting, you're getting your wage. So yeah, like, exactly. It's just people just being absolutely reckless, like with whatever, like it could be that you, I don't know, you spend all your money on booze on the weekend. Yeah, like, if you're exactly a student, uni student, that was it for me. I was like reselling the whole way through uh, uni, like I didn't have to work a job. Mm. Um, I actually chose in my final year to, to work a job because I wanted some experience yeah. because I was like, I want to open a business in this one day. So I said to them, I'll come and work for free. Mm. But they, they were like, no, you're not doing that. But because I was using it as a tool to learn, but for me, I could support myself for reselling, didn't need to do it. I was doing a side hustle the whole way through uni. But the people around me were like, I remember like everyone in like first year, everyone was in their overdraft immediately. Like after like, they spunked the student loan and mm -hmm. then it was overdraft. And then it's like that people were like in like, and I knew people that were in like a free grand overdraft, like after the first year, it's like, how have you done this? Yeah. Like, but it's because people are, are literally just reckless. Like they don't <laughs> care. And if you, if you like us, like if you've, if, even if you're a student and you get a bit of that student loan, put some money to one side yeah. and put it into something that's going to make you money or start that side hustle. That's going to start generating some money. If you, even if you got a nine to five and let's say you're on, let's say you're earning, I don't know, like 1500 quid a month. If you live conservatively, you can still save, even if it's just a hundred pound a month. Easy, just start. Yeah, even just still start. on it. Like, yeah. fucking hell, 1500 pound a month. Like when I was doing it, even at EE, like minimum wage for our age, like I paid my board and that's it. I didn't spend it. It's not hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. so easy to save money. Exactly. But even now when we're making money though, like we don't spend it on anything. Like he doesn't even drive because like we don't need to. Like yeah. we only have one car and we go everywhere. Like it's just not needed. So we cut out literally everything that's minimal and it's just more ways to make money. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And I feel I, like, I don't know if it's people don't have the the right attitude for it or like, I don't know what it is that, but it's so easy to like get started with saving money anywhere. Like mm -hmm. you can minimize your like expenses like in a heartbeat and, and people don't. Do and, it's, it. and it's a life lesson as well. Cause when you do actually start making money, it then prepares you for that amount of money to not like go and just piss it away. Because mm. like we know people that get to that point and it all just goes on like drugs and like whatever. Yeah, I know so many people that have spunked all of their money to nothing. And then it's like, you've just had such a fucking downward spiral. Your head's now twatted. You're in the bin because you've had all this money <laughs> yeah. and now you've got nothing to show for it. Like, and then you're going to kick yourself. Like if, but if you from that, that, let's say that early age, like it's probably a good idea to have like that nine to five and then try and be financially responsible because when you get... When you start doing it, you do start earning good money. You're going to appreciate it Definitely. for one. But then you're also not going to be a dickhead and just blow it overnight. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it's attitude as well. I feel like it's a lot to do with why do you want to start making money? And mm -hmm. I feel like not enough people ask that question question deep enough. Like people just say, oh, I want this, I want that. But like, why do you actually want it? And I feel like because us, we're, we're looking to build something rather than just like flex on people we don't yeah. even fucking like. 
you know what I mean? So what was your your two sort of goals starting out? Like, I know you want to, you say, like, you want to build something, but I noticed that you said, Chris, that, like, you've always said you wanted money. Like, I was very, I was, so, for, but for me, I was always money motivated. I didn't know mm. how I was going to get there, but I was like, one day, I know I'm going to have money. I didn't know what path would take me to get there. Mm-hmm. But do you think that you had a similar mindset or what? what is it? It's I've, weird, isn't it? Because we're both, yeah, we're I think, both in, yeah. I think starting off, I think that was that was the goal uh, to have like cars, to have like a massive house and that, but I couldn't really care now. Like money just doesn't turn me on in any sense. Like often being cash around all the time, mm-hmm. like it's just, it's just like an emotionless thing now. But if someone was to hold like two grand, three grand, four grand, it'd be massive to them. But... I don't, I'm not really interested in that now. And it's, it's all about the, the bigger purpose yep. compared to having a big house. And that's what, so Marcus, who we were just talking about, like, shout out Marcus. Um, <laughs> the goat, yeah, yeah. he's absolutely so, the goat. So we were, we were talking uh, on the pod about like, you, you, once you start to earn like a decent amount, you do become immune to it. Like you said, mm. like, it's like, it doesn't mean the same. And yep. like, it's like, you don't get like a lot of people, let's say, like I know a lot, so many people through COVID that when they got the, the grants from the government, they were like, oh my God. And then they went and spunked it on Rolexes and shit yeah. like that, like yeah. straight away. And it's just like, that's probably, that's the problem. Bounce, NPC bounce, mindset. Bounce back loans. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember EA, what was it? We had like a five pound bonus and literally people just wanking for about five, like not how, was it a whole month? Just yeah, think yeah. of this bonus of five hundred pounds. But it's, it's like it's great. like that, that all the time. And I was at Amazon though, like they were pretty good with them to be fair. But like everyone was always asking, "Oh, when's this bonus coming in? When's this bonus coming in?" And it's just like it's just draining, man. Yeah, that and that, but that's such a draining mentality to be in, like that having to literally be so hyper focused on something like that. Like when you like with you guys now, you can get paid every day of the week. Yeah, literally. And it, it's weird though. Everyone's focused on on money, and it's always a focus point. But it's just. The way that they do it, though, is That's mental. a problem. I feel like it, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, the focus with everyone is like, oh, what's your biggest stressor? Money. Watch this mm-hmm. money. What what you want in life? Money. But then no one asks questions deep enough to get there. Mm-hmm. It, it makes no sense. Well, I think, like, and this is where I think it got, like, what we've just spoke about, like, everyone, and, like, this is sort of, like, my thoughts on it, but, like, money essentially has become a drug to absolutely everyone, right? Yeah. Mm. If you're like, let's say, for example, if you're a drug addict, like, you need that hit. Mm-hmm. Or if you're, let's say, if you're hungry, you, what do you do? You want to eat food mm-hmm. to settle that hunger. If you're, so with everyone who's living paycheck to paycheck, they feel like they're broke all month. Then as soon as they get that money, that money lands in the bank account. It's a massive dopamine hit. They feel relieved. They feel like they can live for another week again, but probably live like a dickhead for a week yeah. mm-hmm. before then having to be back in that vicious cycle mm-hmm. on the hamster wheel of then waiting for the next payday. And that being able to break that, that sort of that notion that a salary is a drug and that, that you're pinning your whole hopes on your boss paying you. It's like when Andrew Tate was, was said like, um, he's like, oh, please, please give me money, sir, please. Like, <laughs> like, it shouldn't be like that. It's should tragic. It? Yeah. It really but is but I, again, that's a typical that though, but like, it's that point about like a smack of door, like generally about, <laughs> no, but, no, but, but like, like needing drugs and that, like they will do absolutely anything for a few quid to get that. Like they'll be selling you fucking like Avon or whatever, but like people <laughs> that need money, they're not doing anything. Yeah, they're yeah. just sat on, on their own fucking on benefits and it's daft, man. Not even, well, obviously not benefits or anything. It's yeah, just sat on a wage yeah, and like, yeah. oh, just look at me. But then as well, these are the people that are trying to flex on everyone else, getting a finance car they can't afford. Exactly. What they, are you doing? They're the people that are worse. Right? And it's like always, it's those people that are always dripped out head to toe yeah. designer as well. And it's yeah. like, how the fuck, like why? And that's the thing like with me now, like, Shout out Hasbulla. I won't, <laughs> like, I barely, like, everything that I wear, I like, <laughs> is usually, like, completely plain. Yeah. Like, all, like, £10 t-shirts, stuff like that. Like, it, like, cringes me out when, Literally. like, seeing someone in, like, a fucking Gucci hoodie or whatever that's <laughs> print everywhere. Yeah. It's like, you're screaming that you've got money, but, every, like, as soon as you get to a certain point, like, you can see right through it. Literally. And but, but we wear it, but it's literally only for marketing. Yeah, marketing. Like, like, I don't wear fucking this shit. Like yeah, CP yeah. and that. I don't wear anything. Like when I don't I'm, wear when I'm out, I'm just wearing a burghouse, whatever. I couldn't really care. And, and but, he knows how I am. I wear all black. Like yeah, yeah. you wouldn't yeah, expect yeah. it looking at the TikToks and that. Yeah, yeah. But I only wear all black and yeah, I don't yeah. wear if anything. If you saw him in like in the street and that, you wouldn't feel I was just gonna him. say that. So I remember like before you we even spoke, I remember like going onto the comment section on your mm. guys and they're like, he's like, do you not realise he's dressed in like that on purpose? Because there's loads <laughs> of stuff about that. Is that intentional what you do? One million percent it is. And mm. this is what so many people don't get. And it just we feeds talk, the pony. Yeah, it just talk, feeds the pony. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about this. Like, so the start of this podcast, HMRC's Most Wanted, what's that just done? <laughs> That's created a clip. Like everything, when you when you sort of get in that mindset, it's a tool. Like even this now. Yeah, literally. There's a camera right there on this. Like when there's a clip of this on TikTok, 
people will just be engaged by that. Marcus, podcast one that we did with him, he wore sunglasses and he came in and said, this is a marketing trick. Shit, I should have done yeah, that. Yeah. Well, he he, he, he said, this him. is a marketing trick. He said, watch what happens. Every tick blew up. Why does he think he's Tate? Why is that guy, dickhead wearing a sunglasses inside? Like people don't realise that there's actually method behind the madness. And, and, <laughs> and it's funny that actually, like, I mean- uh, Kill me off now. I'm going to be thinking about it all it's, the drive it's, home. it's funny you say that though. It's, it's, it's annoying because I'm going to get it done next week, but like Ben's hair always gets pulled off. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to get a mullet because that, it'll just yeah, 10 yeah. times it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> these, these, these little things that we do is like for a reason. Yeah, exactly. And, but, but you know what annoys me? Just like, on topic, but off topic. People judge everything that, like, from a 15 second, like, TikTok clip. Yeah, exactly. How? Like, people are looking what I'm wearing and then judging my intelligence based on that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, right, fair play. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, like and it's just, well, that's that's the whole, the NPC mindset, isn't it? It's, like, it's <laughs> One that million keyboard percent. warrior, like, but in reality, you One know, dimensional. That they're the ones that are sat on the couch, probably very fucking unhappy. Yeah. Doing nothing. Like, I've never, ever in my life commented on someone's Instagram post or someone's TikTok with fucking hate. I don't mm. know what mindset you've got I to be into do that. Yeah, even if you don't like the clip or anything, just, yeah, just scroll. scroll. Why would you want to pu push that onto someone? Like, exactly. like make even like, like for someone like me now, when people do it, like, I think it's funny. Like I'm bulletproof yeah. to it. Yeah. But there was a certain point where I was like, fucking hell. Like what we were speaking about before when I was getting death threats, like, I was like, that's actually fucking, it's fucking mad. This like, Brutal. why do so many people hate me? But then like, you get to a point, it's just like, you realise that them people yeah. must be like, they must be getting fucking, I don't know, must have some shit going on at home. Like, yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. like, I feel sorry for you, actually. Well, you could see it though, if if they're just at like a, normally fa a normal factory job, got like four kids, they've got a wife, they've got no one to take out on. Mm. And then like, that's it. And, that's that's it. That's and, and then when they see someone younger than them, like us, who are doing well for ourselves, then they'll, they'll hate on it. Like, it's just like, because it's probably within them, it's actually a level of sort of regret and mm. envy that then they've missed, well, they missed, like when they were our age, they weren't doing what we're trying to do. Yeah, and like the sure. things as well, like we like we can say like we're not fucking like I, I know like speaking personally, I want to speak for you guys, but like I I wouldn't class myself as successful. I'm not nowhere yeah, near where I want to be. Same but thing. I'm every day we wake up and we try. Yeah, like we're trying to do something. We're not just going. I'm not being that fucking desk jockey sat fixing a presentation. Ham rider. Yeah, like <laughs> it's not. The, but so onto the topic of like, let's go on to. Flipping the dingers. Yeah. This is what I want to get into. Oh, yeah. So basically, to, to let, because we always try and repeat the story and then we always say it completely wrong and then think, why the fuck did we explain it like that? Because that was confusing. But so Chris started with cars. I started with property. So property was this low money down strategy. We still do it, but not as much um, because we want to focus solely on dingers. Um, but we scaled a portfolio from that and that's what I was focusing on. And Chris just started selling cars to make money fast. And then that's when we decided, you know what? Dingers is going to be the right option. We'll just combine our time and efforts to that. And that's how it went from there. But the idea, I don't even know where it came from. Yeah, I think generally out of everyone, I think, as I said, with drums and that, like I've got a drum teacher and he's like, he was at the time, I, I was speaking to Ben. I wasn't speaking to anyone in business. He was the only entrepreneurial person in my life. I said like, well, what did you do when you were younger? It's like, you know, flip cars from a driveway. And it all, all started from there. Uh, it was that that one Range Rover that we got. Probably wasn't the best one, uh, <laughs> but yeah, flipped it for an Audi TT. Uh, so I bought that Range Rover thirteen fifty, flipped that for an Audi TT, and we sold that for two thousand three fifty. So instant one thousand pound profit. And as I said, that was whilst I was at college, whilst I was at Mackey's. So one thousand pounds to a, like a seventeen year olds, like massive. Yeah, 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 huge. And then from there, so. How did it go that you were both going to work together on it? And yeah, so what we were doing is we were flipping cars, but then also putting money that we were earning from cars into property from that strategy. Because although basically with it being a low money down strategy, you can get into a property for like two grand, like cover the seller's legals. And it's for properties that are sticking to the market that they can't get shifted. It's called a lease option agreement where we agree a purchase price to buy in like five years time typically. And we cover the mortgage up until then. And we cash flow it in the meantime, uh, just on a basic rent. What, do you get someone into like- Yeah, yeah, so it's a typical, basically, it's almost like we've purchased it like a pre-approved sale, but we take control rather than yeah. actually putting in the deposit and then buying them uh, in five years time once the prices have increased. And then basically it's like a property with no deposit. So how, let's say when you come to buying it in five years time, mm -hmm. what do you have to do then? How much do you have to put down? Just got, uh, so it's it's like a purchase in general. So Whatever it's like another it 25%, yeah. Okay, so, but we pre-approved the sale. So it's like- um, you're locking in at a cheaper price. Exactly that, yeah. So, and then That's five years crazy, time. Yeah. How often you find deals like with so people in, that'll do that? Yeah, in total, like I was, so we've got 15 properties at the moment um, with that. And it was taking a while. People that teach it, like the gurus sort of say it, it's a strategy, but not many people execute on it. Um, so it is quite hard to come by. It, it was quite difficult. 
It was like averaged out about one every two months. That's how it worked out. But like the amount of like, because Ben was Ben was the one that was like orchestrating everything. But the amount of leads that he had coming in, like it was from absolutely everywhere. But like it combined to like these small amounts. So, but like that's what I mean. The people teaching it don't have a clue, yeah. and 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 I, I don't know how we've even got that to be honest. But yeah, it's all been it's, Ben. It's, it's all like, it's basically like a lot of people teach it on theory, yeah. but in actually executing on it, it's like you need leads. Leads the lifeblood of any business anywhere. Yeah, yeah. But with that one, it's like a needle in a haystack type of thing. Um, but we didn't have any other choice because it was low money down, so we had to do it. So then from there, you guys, so what you were started on your driveway. Yeah. yeah. Right? And then you've now got a plot. Is this the first plot you've had? Oh, we had that. Uh, yeah, D-town, that unit, D-town two unit, car yeah. unit that we didn't need Fuck at all. Me, that yeah. was pointless. Yeah, so we've learned so much in the short space of doing it, but for some reason we thought to look more credible to the, the customer coming, we needed a premises. So we got a, a two car lockup. Uh, it was it was really cheap to be honest. Could start two cars, but but yeah, that's just this is pointless. Flipped a few in there, and then from there we went straight to the new place, which is like really good for us now. Yeah. So what sort of what let's say like volume wise, what have you took it from to where you're at now? In terms of being on the pitch now, yeah. so we were averaging. We've only been in no, the so, so since you started. Like so, when you first started, yeah. like how like when you didn't drives, how many could you expect to move? to move and how quick was that compared to where you're at right now? That's another story that as well, because when we first started, we just, we didn't have a clue because there's not much information out there. Like a lot of industries now you can sort of look at other people in the game and get a course and stuff. Mm. But with the motor trade being so old school, not many people selling the information. We were buying the wrong cars. So we were buying cars for like two grand. Like as I say, the Range Rover was 1,350. We sold, we obviously we traded it and then sold it for two, three, 500. Fucking two, three thousand, <laughs> three hundred and fifty. Yeah. Um, but we were buying the wrong cars because then we were buying like four grand cars, five grand cars. It was going to be a pickup at one point. Yeah, like, stupid, like, stupid. We just thing. didn't have a clue. We were yeah, buying yeah. the wrong cars. So with that type of price range, they take sometimes even a month, three months to sell. So it was a nightmare. Um, and then we've grown it to over twenty car sales a month uh, with the the strategy that we executed. So now you're just focusing on, as you say, dingers. Dingers. Yeah. So ding- what is a dinger? The ding is anything under fifteen hundred quid. That is the price yeah, range. So dinger, anything under yeah. fifteen hundred quid is a dinger, and that's how we that's how we play it. Obviously, the terms come from a lot of uh, other places, <laughs> like we know, but uh, to say the least, to say the least. But now, yeah, we just want to. But but like the influence, as as we were saying before, the influence we have in this sort of section in the motor trade is massive. Like I'm in a lot of the groups on Facebook. Like when posting cars and that, you have to be on Facebook. Like you have to have a profile. But I'm in a lot of these groups, like these traders, your stock finders. And people are labeling them types of cars as dingers now. Yep. So, and they never used to. Like yeah. when we first said it, like stop calling dingers the literally stolen cars. And like, we just kept saying it, kept saying it. And but I remember there was this. I was on. The, I was on a page literally last night, and it was like uh, someone posted a Vauxhall car. So it was like I bought this from BCA. Oh, it's not been not been arrived. Where is it? And then this lad in the comments saying, "Oh, it's probably being flicked by these nineteen year olds off TikTok." And the <laughs> amount of reactions that it got though. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's massive. Mental. And so you're now at a point where, so 20, 20 a month. Yep. Yeah. What, what what are you looking to sort of do like turnover wise and profit a month? Yeah. So we average around, because it uh, depends on what car we're selling, but we average 500 pound profit per car flip um, at the end of it. Um, and obviously 20. But, and with turnover, it's, it's, it's probably average between a thousand and fifteen hundred pounds. So you could imagine from that very small turnover yeah. for, for an average car. But yeah, the profit speaks for itself though. Make it like that's... You're making a healthy margin there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so... And saying that, it's funny because anyone else we speak to that's not doing cars, say that's a good margin. Yeah, yeah. Everyone in cars, like all these old school motor traders, bollocks. So they say like, oh, you're making nothing on cars. Yeah, yeah. We are. Like yeah, the yeah. return's visible. Exactly. Like, and I guess that I wonder, what do you think sort of the, I thought about this before, the, let's say the older generation of, let's say car dealers who've been it, the families, like, mm-hmm. and the, they've been in the game for years. What do you think they think about you guys? Have you had contact with any of them? Or uh, I think a lot of them hate us, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I think we're despised, yeah. to be honest. I think that's what it is. Uh, I went, Some uh, of them are absolute boils. I went to uh, uh, a car auction near us with one of my mates and the amount of looks that I got of people when I was there, though, is like... I think TikTok's not really the place, but we're on Facebook as well, where we post a lot, and that's where that's where they predominantly <laughs> see us. Breeding ground, but, man. But, but as I say, but a lot of a lot of people just see us like like our mechanics across the road, like they knew about us before, and they've yeah. got like everyone has these everyone everyone has these preconceptions that we are balanced, but like when they actually get to speak to us, they're like yeah, you, you generally are proper sound lads. So, yeah, yeah. so and that's just the thing. That's just sort of 
it, it shows you and highlights to you what a 15 second clip can, can do. <sighs> it's, it's mental. Ridiculous. It's like, mental. Honestly, some of the shit I read, we've had, the amount of times we've had like a business opportunity bollocks like, <laughs> message. Because they're, they're looking at like, I think you've got a good business going, lads, but what you need is this, what you need is yeah. that. You have no clue what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's a 15 second video we record on a Saturday. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. It's ridiculous. I don't give a fuck what you're Yeah, about. like... Yeah. Please just fuck off. <laughs> do you need do. that. I do need that two grand cash injection. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cash injection. I'm going to burn her over that. Like genuinely give it now. <laughs> Honestly, ridiculous. So you've got like super big plans as well, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Well, like you, we talked about before. Let's run over them. Yeah. So dingers on mass is the game. A lot of people, when they're commenting, like we do get a lot of supportive messages as well. And they're saying, oh, I can see you guys working your way up to like the, the big leagues and stuff like that with the cars you're selling, but it's not our intention anyway. Um, it's dingers on mass, and that's the the game plan. Why? Why do you not want to do the, the let's say the more prestige guys? Couldn't really give a fuck. Nah, it's it, it, really. Oh, that was just like sorry. That was, <laughs> that was a bit full. <laughs> no, I don't know. no, but I think I think for, for for on a whole, like the bigger picture, like the marketing and everything behind it yeah. is a lot more popular, and I think yeah. that that can draw a lot more further. But also, it's a strategic way of. There's a lot of in these higher end cars. Yeah, like the the nicer, but you still get the same problems. You still get comebacks. You still get knobhead customers. Um, and you still get the same issues. And also the, the margin for the money you're putting down is still like, it's not not high. Like you'll be on like a hundred grand car might be like 10K profit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Like so, that's a scary yeah. amount of risk to a car. Yeah, I yeah. think I think looking at business point as well, I think it'd be much more easy to franchise in the future. Like we're, we're in the Northeast, we've got a site just outside Durham and uh, there's, there's going to be another couple of sites where we're going to start there as well. And they're only within like half an hour of us. And especially looking at Manchester, there's so many places where we could do it down here. But if you're going to the high end of market, you're looking at a very niche amount of cars. So if you've got one base there and you're like struggling to find them amount, you're only going to be able to do it there. You're not going to be able to replicate it in so many other yeah, places. Yeah. So and I think it's a lot more scalable. Well, I was thinking what we're about doing. before. So interestingly enough, like I was saying, I was mind blown by like, let's say the followers that you're on at the moment, it's nowhere near as what I, I would have expected because I knew you were straight away. I've seen your content so much <laughs> and I know so many people that have. Yeah. Um, but, I was thinking at first, I thought, would the franchise model work? Because does are people buying from you because they like you? But I remember that you said before, you don't actually, you've never, not actually had any leads yeah, from Instagram. Or, 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 I, I still think if we, if we create a franchise without a personal brand and that, like, I, I think it'd be doable anyway. Yeah, but, no, that's what you're saying. You're yeah, saying. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I was thinking at first, would it work because people want to buy into Chris and yeah. Ben? But yeah. then I remembered that you said before, well, actually, we've not had any... Fucking... Literally none. So then it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Your personal brand's massive and that's the only And it'll benefit it. the business massive as well. Because we've had so many people actually down south in other places that want to buy cars. I just can't... But... You just contradicted yourself. Yeah, no, I have contradicted myself. Yeah. But, but I, I do think... I, yeah, yeah, I have... Got, I, fuck, fuck that. I, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying Keep the clipping. Keep the clipping. Well, no, that, yeah, I, I just think in personal brand anyway, growing on social media is the connections you get anywhere. Mm -hmm. like naturally, you sort of get a, a much better network rather than just sort of in your own bubble. And that's the power in social media anyway. It's good to have. Definitely, for sure. So in terms of sort of social media and you've recently released um, a course, haven't yep. you? So you've been advertising that on your TikTok and stuff. So what what is the course that you're doing now and how has that come about? So the course that we're doing now was basically something that we were recommended to do just as part of what we're doing because we're getting a lot of DMs, a lot of questions um, all the time. We've got a course and I think it's sort of second nature. Everyone in an industry seems to have a course or some mm -hmm. sort of subscription and we thought, fuck it, may as well and put as much as we can in there. Um, and it's basically just from starting off from our driveway. It's basically an at-home at car flipping um, from your driveway um, how to start making money ASAP. Um, it's just basically from how to go from zero to start making money fast. And that's it goes through absolutely and everything, everything that everything that you need to know about flipping a dinger is, is inside that course like yeah. literally how to do certain bits of paperwork just sourcing everything in it it's very very simplistic there is moving parts to it obviously hence why we get questions and stuff and um, but it's such an easy side to sort of get into and it's it's a daunting one though because yeah. a lot of people's limiting belief is um oh, i know nothing about cars i can't get into that <laughs> um we have zero clue about cars yeah. genuinely none yeah and <laughs> Like, 
all you need to know is basically like if if it's working or not and certain certain large problems that cause a car to like break down or whatever. But apart from that, you don't need anything. There's been plenty of videos where we've done on TikTok and I've just trusted what he said. Oh, just say this in this video. Yeah. Um, and like some of the way, the more technical ones, like, oh, this is out, like the part of a car because I know nothing about them. And I get ripped because he's wrong as well. So <laughs> yeah, it's, we, we obviously- so Yeah, yeah but people it. people pick up on like fucking daft shit, man, all the time. And it's like stupid. It's like, why do you care about that? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah it's, it's just the nitpickers, isn't it? It's yeah. just anything they can have you on. It's like, oh, I've got one up on you. Literally. Get hard on. It's yeah. funny you say that though. It's absolutely hilarious. We had one one hater that was just relentless every single day yeah. coming out. I don't know if you've seen the video I responded to him. <laughs> oh, honestly, it was sick. Every, the reaction yeah. to it was mint. Yeah, Everyone was commenting yeah. like it was so positive. He's ended up um, deleting his account on both Instagram, uh, TikTok, and I think YouTube as well. He's took himself down. It was just every single day was respond like hating, like, oh, he's a dodgy, he's a cowboy, he's a this, he's a that. I made one response video and that's him gone. And I was like, oh, fair play. But people can't hack it though. It's like stupid. Like why constantly, constantly give it? And then as soon as you get the slightest bit, it's like shit yourself. It's like- It was still yeah. pretty tame. There was no swearing in there. Yeah, there was <laughs> no- they, Generally, like, I could go in a lot more on certain people, but they just couldn't handle it. <laughs> Well, so with you guys now, so you're 19, like when do you want to, like when for in terms of expansion, how quick are you looking to get that? Oh, so we've got another, we've got another places in, in the process now. So, so two, two more sites are in the process. Like this one's like full up and we've got two more, like very close. As I said, about half an hour from us. Uh, but yeah, we, we know that as soon as we systemize it and that it's dead easy to get them two done. And then from there, is it, is it just franchising? Yeah. You'll be seeing one, we'll seeing one here <laughs> soon. Money very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just everyone needs a dinger. So it'll be, it'll be on mass. Yeah. And we were saying, this is what my brother was saying like the other day with some, like the car that I had, um, like a few years ago, um, was like, honestly, like a shed on wheels. Like what color it, was it? Black. Oh, I had a bright green Cleo. Honestly, <laughs> it was uh, it was so bad, and like every time you turned it on, like it would smoke. Like it was oh, honestly man. like it was bad. Don't but know then, if we'd be selling yeah, that. Like the moment that we <laughs> the moment that we put it up, like that. This is a funny story as well. So the moment that like because I got a new car, um, I got um an F Type Jag after that, and I so but I'd left that one on the drive for ages, hadn't moved it, and then it wouldn't even start, would it? Like it was like we we jump start it and then it would work but then like if you turned it off again it was just like yeah, the battery, like the battery was flat yeah, yeah yeah um and it was just fucked and then we we thought we'd sorted it he probably put it up got absolutely spammed with dms for it like it was mad when how, it, much, how much did you put it on for how much was it and what, how much did it go for when yeah. was that it was Years ago. I was though. gonna say, yeah, like literally do that now. It's the same game, yeah. just like nine hundred quid instead, nine fifty thousand yeah. or fifteen hundred. So we did that, and then the guy took it, took and then like because it had like no fuel in it, got it to the petrol station down the road, then was like, um, well, yeah, I've just got out to fill it up, and like, it won't fucking start again. And then was like, well, it's not mine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only we could do that. <laughs> if only, yeah. <laughs> so what have you had? Like, what, what bad? Exp have you had any bad experiences? Like since. You know what it is? It's, it's funny because with our business model with dingers, everyone's like, you're going to get too many comebacks. The business model's dead. It doesn't work. You have to go up to a different level. We've had two in our whole time. And one of them was a mid-tier car as well. It wasn't yeah. even a dinger. Mm. Um, oh no, it was a How three, many cars three, do you reckon you sold now in total? Oh, well over a hundred, but yes. I don't know. Cause what, like a lot of them were private. And then obviously since we started to systemize and actually went into a business, that's when we started to record a bit more. But still, I don't know with dingers. I, I think it might be that perspective as well, where if, if they have one, the, like if it breaks down, they might not even they might not even ask for the money back. Consider getting yeah. back to it. Yeah. So that's what I think is different. Like uh, I called up like uh, a person the other day because I needed something off them. It's like, oh yeah, it's been in a write off like literally a month after we bought it. So obviously it's not our fault. It's mm. they've been in a crash. But that's what I mean. There might have been times where things have happened, but as it's a dinger, they yeah, don't they really just care. think, Well, what what could, what else did they expect? Yeah, it's exactly. Really, yeah, and the, you know what it is as well. The mid tier, like I feel like in time. Like in business, you need to actually really like who you're serving. I feel like you need to like the customer you're selling to to actually enjoy what you're doing. I feel like mid tier cars, I could not be asked because I found that just NPC level, yeah, just yeah. working class, nitpicking about everything because that's the only money they have. So they're going to put like seven grand into a shit car anyway. Yeah, yeah. And like, I don't want to be dealing with that. It's just like, oh, what's a scratch here? What's this dent here? Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. the process is so much easier selling dingers. Literally, I think I had the best one the other day. It was over a Ford Fiesta. 
It's like a grand. He literally, he didn't even start the car. He didn't even look at it. He's like, here's the money. <laughs> yeah, he just jumped do, in. Do, 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 you want the, do, you want, do you want the green slip? Do you want the, do you want the logbook? Nah, I couldn't really give a fuck. And he just like drove away. It was like, sound. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, the, no, the type, the amount of times that people have gave me cash before they've even started, even turned it on is unbelievable. It's mental. Wow. It literally is mental. It sounds like you found like a fucking hack. Nah, it, it literally is, is a hack. Is, yeah. Again as well, like also with the high end, um, the high end tier as well. The reason why I wouldn't want to sell in there is because there's so much prep behind it. Um, there's a lot of dodginess and also there's a lot of like bollock stroking of the customers. Like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, we'll do that for you. We'll do that for yeah, you. Yeah. We'll do that for you. And you're making a 10 grand margin. Like the yeah. time you put into that, you could sell more dingers, less headache and yeah, faster yeah. moving. Yeah. So it's just for you guys, it's literally like it's in and out. Yeah, straight away. Nice, nice, nice. And so with like at your level right now, like so you've pioneered the word dingers. Mm. <laughs> is there... Is there a lot of competition for you guys or not? No. Uh, none. The, the only competition is like Sally and a driver or something like, <laughs> but that's what I mean. Either that or like a dodgy, like a, a, a dodgy person that, that sells. Just like the dodgy dealer that's on like a scrapyard type of thing. Got it. And I just like, that's the only competition. That's why. But like business wise, there's, there's no businesses that we're aware of that do that. Like if it is, it's just like bigger businesses. Like as you were saying before, like your brother, uh, just like part extra clear or things like that. So people are much more comfortable coming to us than other places. Yeah. And so are you guys like, let's say because you guys are so in the course, are you worried at all about people stepping on your toes competition wise or not? No, one hundred percent. I feel like the the vision and the end goal and everything like that. It just it's it's not. Uh, this isn't from a bragging standpoint or anything like that. I feel like just the strategy that we've got in the background that no one actually sees. Yeah, we sell dingers, but what we're actually doing. And like, you're just, you're in your own lane, super focused and you yeah. just know you're going to pull it off. Yeah. yeah I think, the best way to have, the best way to be. I think the things that we're going to like, we're going to introduce, like when it all comes to the branding and other things, like people are going to be blown away. Like, oh, you know what? That That's a 1500 pound car. Generally looks like it's a 50 grand car. So that's how we're going to pull it off. Heck. Definitely. Heck. Look forward to seeing it. But I feel yeah. like as well with a lot of course creators, I feel like you like a lot of people do say that. And I was definitely one one like we were both were, weren't we? Mm, when we were like, oh, should we make a course? We'll make create create a competition. I feel like the, the sad thing is a lot of people won't even action it. A lot of people will buy the course and won't even do it. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. Because I think for a lot of people it's sort of that um let's say that they're getting they then let's say it's like, right, I'm sat there, <clears throat> I'm unhappy with myself, need to do something about this. Even just buying the course confirms in their head yeah, that they, they yeah. took action. Head, yeah. And they've done something, even though they've not used it, but they can be like, oh, well, I bought the course. I'll, I'll revisit it in like a month. Yeah. Like they can put it, like they can just like sort of justify to themselves that they've actually done something now. So true. So like, and, it's, and it's the exact same thing if people are actually like not contemplating on doing the actual action, but like the, 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 they're watching the course, they think that that is the action. Like Ben always speaks to me. It's funny enough because we always do courses. Like there's so much that we can learn. Yeah. Uh, but when Ben's doing a course, he's like, I, I, I don't feel like I'm actually working here. But it's like, that is the thing that's going to develop both of us. That's what I mean. I, I get, I'm like, because there's a term course junkie with a lot of people that just jump between courses, doing courses and not, like not yeah. actually taking action. I've done like, I just feel like now I'm deep into business where I'm like, Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like a cost junkie, even though I'm not. Like, yeah. oh, I shouldn't be doing that. Like, I want to be spending the time elsewhere that I can be doing actionable. But like, that is where it needs to be. Like, you need yeah. to be learning, then implementing, learning, implementing. Yeah, yeah, People exactly. just yeah, do yeah. It's, it's definitely that, like, even because I think a lot of people, it's even like with that idea of, like, not even necessarily business like ours, any business, like, they'll always think like, oh, like, it could be that they've got no idea. Like, well, they, they know what their idea is for the business, but they're like, I don't know how to get there. Like, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of us, like, like for you, for example, and for me, I didn't know how to do everything from day one. Literally. You learn you learn from being on the job. Yeah. Like you learn from experience and stuff. And then like, I think people get too focused on the idea of like, oh no, I couldn't do that because I don't know this, but it's just learn it as you fucking go. Definitely. Like wing it. Everyone yeah, wins yeah. it. And you have to, you don't have the plan. Like the amount of times our models like being like, Fucking stupid. Like when we look back and like, why did we even think of that? Yeah, yeah. Like generally- we're, we're, like, we're constantly making mistakes or like, like, uh, but like obviously learning and improving from it, like very, very, very shortly we start buying from auction uh, and it's, it's so addictive on there. But I remember I was like, there was, there was a car that was really profitable uh, and it was like, yeah, had MOT, I'm going to buy that. And I looked and I was like, I've just bought it from fucking London. So, but we, we, we constantly make mistakes. The delivery fees but, are bonkers. But that's what I mean. But like, like we learn from them though. And yeah. that's, that's, that's how you succeed in business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like every... Like it is like, it's, it's, it's like corny as it might sound, but like every mistake is a lesson. Literally. Yeah. You're not going to do it again. Wait, did I tell you about it before with the affiliate thing? 
yeah. the guy that was the adders off a bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <coughs> made a couple of grand off us, like, but it, you've yeah, learned now. I've learned it's not gonna happen again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, I've stopped it now, so it's it's not gonna get any worse. And then like, yeah, you take take it on the chin and bounce back. Like, fuck it. Exactly but that. People don't have that. I think I think people like for like will have that roll over and die mentality as opposed Literally. to bounce back. Oh well that's happening. I'm not gonna do anything now. Yeah. Totally. I tried. Yeah. Yeah. Tried. Like it's it's like the it is the NPC mindset. Yeah, for sure. We're in a simulation. We are in a simulation. I'd, the way I see it, I feel like a lot of people are sort of on it, switched on, and know yeah. what they're doing. I feel like we're just all competing against each other to get out of it. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that's what it is. I feel like we all network eventually together, combine, and then like all the NPCs are just still in the game. It's weird, but I do think we are in a simulation. I really do. Be driving, and someone's totally in their own own fault, and it's like. Stare at you like that. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? No, was, can you remember that conversation we had? When we were driving home, it was like one o'clock in the morning from London. We were doing, I think it was a business, uh, networking event. Yeah. Um, we just had the deepest conversation about like a simulation. It was so weird. <laughs> oh, it was, we were sleep deprived, but then it was, yeah. the deeper you get into it, it's scary. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's like a dark, it's just, you start like deep in it about like space and shit. Like, yeah. I, th- I think that was it. It was like, like generally, like, yeah, we're, we're here today for social media and, and, and you've got us on, but like, why am I generally in Manchester right now? Why am I on planet? Like, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, it kind of sounds like a conversation what? where you're like stoned or whatever, yeah. but like, what the fuck am I doing in this building right yeah, now? Yeah, like, why, why is this building like here? Yeah, like, why, yeah. Why, like, it's, yeah, yeah. It is weird. Like, why was that created? It's, it's strange. <laughs> um, but again, like, this is just general qu- questions in our head. Yeah, yeah. But NPCs don't ask. But you, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> but that's what I mean. You've, you've that it stems from the thing that you've got a question. You've yeah, got yeah. a question it. But yeah. NPCs don't question it. Yeah. Another we like I dying all that. <laughs> 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 They're just another cog in the machine. Aren't yeah, they? Like, yeah, literally for real. Mindless, like. And the thing is, as well, like NPCs that we know, NPCs, yeah. or look at like M- you know, like the the stuff on TikTok, like oh, I jumped in this train with NPCs, yeah, yeah. and NPCs will laugh at that video if it's not them, <laughs> and it's them. <laughs> literally, <laughs> like what on earth? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Oh, fuck I love them up. people though, doing them NPC stuff. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking. I think some of the some of the content that we see on like TikTok and stuff nowadays is absolutely fucking golden. Yeah, you can yeah. see that like content is created for NPCs as well, though. Like we'll just be scrolling down. It's like why why has that got ten million views? <laughs> but it's why, like honestly, <laughs> some of the videos though, you do think yeah. like Jesus, like come yeah. on. Like, just, like, you, that's the thing as well. But like, TikTok is made for NPCs. Yeah. So. Remember Andrew Tape. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a joke. That what was it? Andrew Tape. What was the other one? Andrew Andrew, Andrew Snake and that things. Yeah, like that. I was. <laughs> Stupid, that got like 10 mil. Like, but yeah, no, it's just that. TikTok is made for NPCs. So. Oh, I actually remember what you're on about now as well. With Did the, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, Better Call Saul one. Yeah, the fucking like the, and the, but that goes back to like, when you see those videos, it's to like, it is like you said to, <laughs> <laughs> the whole purpose of it is just to entertain the masses and the masses yeah. are zombies because we were talking about it's like, and I was doing a TikTok live every week. And like some people on there saying like, it's mad how you've only got like 30 people in this live, but you've got someone like Luke Bennett, who's got 10,000 people in and he's dancing around his kitchen. Fucking and we're things. giving advice, like trying to help people make money, like trying to do something productive. And you've got people telling Luke Bennett, what's a pan on his head. It's <laughs> like, mental, isn't it? Literally They're unreal then, they are. <laughs> They're funny as man. It's, it's absolutely daft. Like I see as well, like a lot of, <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. Breaking wines, man. Every time there's- That no, doesn't make sense there's, either. There's a million videos that are literally a, a control C and control V. Yes. But yeah, every yeah. one has about 5 million views yeah, on exactly. it. How is it? It's the exact same. Like, All right. It's like, how's that, how's that getting views, man? <laughs> it's surely it's been rinsed to death. That's what we thought. We thought, you know, because if we do a certain video for, t- for too long, like a certain video format, that'll die. Yeah, yeah. Because we do it too much. Like, wakey, fair play to him, <laughs> yeah, but, he's still going. Yeah, yeah. Like, if, if, if you were like, if you were just like, if you didn't know them, you weren't speaking to them, and you just seen an NPC on the phone, like, you, you, you'd, you'd think they were a baby though. Like, you know when like, babies are like, uh, like laughing and that. <laughs> the well, attention span. Though, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, it's it is, mental. It's straight, it's a scary place that we're living in. <laughs> scary place. The golden uh, though. Have you heard that about as well, like, um, with like TikTok, how it's supposed to like push been pushing like certain things on the west yeah. like whereas like apparently like in china ah, like tiktok it? will only show stuff that's like maybe say like motivational or stuff that's like about let's like, say informational being productive but in the west it's like showing like andrew tape like it's like so <laughs> it's, like mindlessly trying to like fuck everyone in the west but in yeah. like over in like china and stuff like it's like actually used as a tool to 
teach people. It's they. It's literally they. Yeah. It's it is. It's they control it. No comment that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a no, yeah, no <laughs> comment. It's a no cancellation for Chris and Ben. That's what it is. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's scary as well. How yeah. the control, like with, with what sort of pushed out to the media and stuff like that it is weird. Um, well, we're yeah. seeing it with Tate now, aren't we? Yeah. Literally. Guys. Just the news and that. Yeah. Rest in peace, Tate. Free, free, the man, free the guys. Free, free the guys. Free the guys. <laughs> Literally what I said. But honestly, Tate's a boy as well. Like a lot of things that you said, again, if you're offended by it, fair play, but I think that, I think like, yeah, like I get that some of the stuff he says like is like controversial mm -hmm. but there's so much actual truth in some of the other sets of stuff is like and it's just like people don't like it, like mm -hmm. to hear it like yeah they, don't they want, they want, com they yeah, want they comfort want, they want to stay in like like you said like that normal comfort zone mm. kate is getting up and telling you to to be a man to, mm -hmm. to go and push yourself to get in the gym get healthy but like the average joe is like sofa surfing sat there doesn't want to fucking hear it yeah and Neither do the people at the top because they don't want anyone controlling them. Yeah, literally. And then the people that are switched on in business sort of understand it's what he's saying is controversial, but it's a market employee anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So and that's it. That's it. Like he, like he openly said many times, like I had, there was like phase one, phase two, phase three, blah, blah, blah. I knew that I was going to blow up at this point. Mm. We launched a plan for me to take over the internet and it worked. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, everyone that hates on him, that comments, you're just feeding into that marketing Literally, program. exactly that. It's like what we were talking about, but just on a much grander scale. Mm. Like, and he's executed it like perfectly. We do need that marketing plan though from Tate. We need to find that somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I would give some bags for that. Like, literally, <laughs> that is, it is for, it's mental though. Like people, do, again, people don't question, but like how he's done that is ridiculous. Like everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I'm, you, like obviously before, obviously it's calmed down a little bit now, but like your TikTok would just be Tate, yeah. Tate, 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 Tate. There's an army. And mm. I get that it worked with the affiliates and stuff like that. That's how he's getting it done. But it was like you, you there's still people that create take content today with no, no financial affiliate. benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then and, like it just shows you that he's got an actual fucking loyal fan base as well. It's not just dick riders that were in and out yeah, and not that sure. ass. Now he's gone. And the thing is as well, the fact that he had knob fucking, jockeys. Yeah, the fact <laughs> that he had um he's had like armies of people. Like, have you seen like the videos of people? Oh, like, he's got a car and he's just like Playing. Crowds of people. Yeah, have yeah. seen it where um, <clears throat> he's, in, where he's in prison and people are playing that Turn It On La Vida song, yeah. like hoping that he can hear it from prison. Like there's just people doing laps around the prison, like <laughs> moving the song out. But yeah, nice, some boy. Yeah, he, he's a G. <clears throat> he is an absolute G. In terms of like, like your guys' mindsets and stuff, and you've obviously had the confidence to go into doing this and you're, you're putting yourself out there on mm -hmm. TikTok. Has it always been that easy for you? Nah. No, no, no. Explain a bit. Honestly. We, I know that we were saying before you was a bit introverted. But yeah. yeah. Like talk about that. It's bonkers as well because uh, it, we, we've posted that much. You can't scroll back to the start. Yeah. We were, Can you remember the stupid stuff we used to post? Just, uh, I don't even want to go into it. It just cringed me out. But, like yeah. there was just a lot of point videos. I was wearing like a suit and shit. He was just wearing like joggers and a and a burghouse. And then he started wearing a suit at one point as well. The it's content was the laughable. So it's taken it's taken a while, but you can quite clearly see the development until we've like cracked the code. And then yeah. But because again, because people can't see from what we first started as, they just sort of see as what we are now. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. And then like yeah, yeah. they don't see how we've like how timid we were, how shit the content was, the level of intelligence type of thing, and how it's shifted and how yeah. it's grown. Um, because that's all it's been doing, just documenting what we're doing. Exactly. And that's uh, like, we, we've had like people at the moment, like we, we always encourage people like document, like even people doing like Amazon, it's always like document your journey. Straight away. Because yeah. then if you're, if you're going to build a personal profile and you want to take it to one day where you're a mentor or a coach, you've got a whole history of content there where people sure. can see you started from the same position as them. And that's the thing, like, let's say with your course, if people wanted to scroll all the way down, Literally. they could see you starting from the, the same point. Definitely. Yeah. And we're that's what like, that's loose. probably the best marketing tool that there is. Like say, look at the roadmap. We've gone from, let's say when you, if you, did you start filming on driveway or not? Was it when you got a lot? No, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we started filming like from, oh yeah, it was definitely before that. Cause you remember the, <laughs> remember the podcast in your bedroom? Oh yeah. yeah, it was yeah. Way before that. Yeah. It was way before so that. Say you've done that. Yeah. And then now to the point where you've got the lot, you've literally got the blueprint within the videos. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's weird as well. We're in a generation where, I don't, I don't, I can't speak for other generations, but it's definitely in ours where it's like everyone is just wanting to flex on other people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So they don't want to show the journey. They just want to show, oh, when I crack it, when I'm making money, then I'll start doing it. Yeah, yeah we, it doesn't work. We, we had a mate that we constantly tried to push because he started wanting to do dropshipping. We had a mate and he was like, 
you know what? Like what you lads are doing is class. It's class. It's like, do start now. Start yeah. it now. Like show like your whole journey is like, nah, nah, I only want to, uh, I'm only going to do it when I'm like on a, on a boat with like, these lasses. Or something. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. Like everyone now I think like has the, um, it's because of the, Insane amount of Dubai content. Oh, it's fucking <laughs> stupid, What's man. Dubai content? It's like, like, fair enough with Marcus, yeah, he's proper sound, but that type of content, it does my fucking <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> like, honestly, it's just I like- I just realised what you said, Dubai. Yeah, Dubai, yeah. Dubai right, okay. No, but I'm yeah, saying. it's just like, oh, it's that same type of thing. It's like- oh, Repurposed content, that's all it is. I could, I could think like, of so many people doing it, man. It's mental. But it's, yeah, and it bangs. Like, it bang, yeah, yeah, why does it bang? Because it attracts the NPCs. That type of, yeah, yeah exactly It sells that. to them. And like, it's, it's just like, I think for, I don't, I don't know. I, like for me, like, I feel like I'd like to think that even if I wasn't running this business or anything, if I seen that content, I'd be like, I'd spot a mile off. Like yeah. that's fucking bullshit. That. Yeah. But some people just buy into it and it's like, mm. yeah. oh my God, I can go. That's on, what I can't I can, get my head around. I can go on like um, a jet and I can go and just like live in Dubai if I do this one drop shipping course, like, mm. and just sell one product. But we're, we're showing the real deal with like, we're showing that like, we're selling cars in fucking minus five degrees snow, but then these people are like, just dancing about in Dubai. Like <laughs> literally it's like, I don't see, it's it's much more credible coming from our point of view to there, but like everyone wants to just have like a yacht in Dubai or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's not showing the true story. And, and most of the, and the things as well. Like I can guarantee that you boys will be making more than half the people that are flexing that lifestyle. On yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a scary world that we live Stupid, in. Stupid, You have man. to be, yeah, but oh, it's it's difficult as well because it's influence and what yeah. appeals to the younger audience. So they're doing it for a reason yeah. and it's appealing to them and then they're getting into it, realizing it doesn't work and then it's a downward spiral. For, oh, it's weird, it's a difficult it's, it like, I mean, as again, it's just ego at the end of the day, but we're not bothered. But like, say if we spoke to like one of our old mates, like family member, they wouldn't really think that we're like that like, that rich or whatever, but then like they think of someone else with like a finance BMW or something like that, and he's making it. Just because we don't choose to flex it, it's yeah, weird. Exactly. It's, it's weird society. It's sort of and and the things as well is that the people that will like let's say the I don't know let's say people that are, are struggling paycheck to paycheck, they will not they will they will second guess buying a course, mm -hmm. but they will go and finance a car that <sighs> will make them skin literally. And on that stuff, like that you were saying about the course as well. So I've talked on this before. Like, <clears throat> people are always so against courses. Like, they don't get oh, it. my yeah. dad. When I when I said that we were releasing a course, my dad thought it was a pyramid scheme. <laughs> we did it all the time. We had a, I had someone join my live uh, the other night. Like pyramid scheme. This I was like, educate yourself. There's nothing fucking pyramid about yeah, this. Like, what really. the fuck are you on about? Like. Just jumping on a bandwagon where they don't even yeah. know what a pyramid yeah. scheme is. Yeah. They'll just say it. Like, yeah. Honestly, someone like, I know it so sounds like we're promoting it now, but someone could pay for our course, which is 197. They could flip a dinner, make 500 pound profit. That is instantly paid for it there. Yeah. But no one would question twice about going to uni for four this is, years. This is exactly for 40 grand. what I'm going to get to because that was my exact fucking point. No one second guesses the university it is because it's, it's still a course. It's literally. still just, it's literally like just, Physical, in person. Well, you don't even have to do that now. Like I did the majority of mine online in my final year. Mm. But, the, and that's exactly like doing one of, like some of ours. But the thing is, let's say if someone comes off our course and they're not making a grand, a grand a month straight away, whatever, whatever like their expectations were, they'll come back, they'll fucking hate on it. But people will go to university, spend all that money, getting all that debt. And, and, end and up then, at yeah, end up in Mackey's and then be like, well, oh, well, I can't like- And nah. defend uni yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> defend it. Nah, uni was best time of life. Yeah, literally, you just go fuck but, like, it's like the, But unis get away with it because, yeah. but like people forget university is not just, it's not fucking free education. It's a fucking business. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, it's literally what we're doing, but on a much bigger scale. Yeah. That's what I mean. When my dad said that, I was like, well, so is your uni degree lecturer or whatever, is he, is he part of the pyramid scheme? He's like, no. <laughs> Like they're so quick to defend it yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. It's like sometimes like I am a bit embarrassed. Like Ben will bring up a point. It's like, why do you actually have that point? And then you've got to start questioning things. So many people are defensive about things that they shouldn't be defensive about. Yeah, you have stupid. to open your eyes to everything though. Like I think, I think that's because like when like, let's say it's sort of maybe more so that traditional mindset of just being conditioned. You go, you start school, then you go to university, then you get your job and then mm. that's it. Yeah. But then like, anything outside of that to everyone is like, and like go on the aggressive mm -hmm. and like, then we'll hate on anything we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny how, they, how angry they get. Well, you only have to, you only have to look on like one video's TikTok comments to know that, don't you? Literally. Like, I was going to say something there and I literally, I completely forgot what it was. It was somewhat on the lines of uni and it just pisses me off all the time. 
It really does. But it's, it's mental how generally like it's frowned upon with people in society selling courses. Why? I just do not understand so it. So when we when we released the course, it was like we, we oh, made, we a, made a video so made a video funny. for it, and about we it was like about hundred comments. It was like all negative. It wasn't even a viral video. That's what that's when we knew yeah, we were yeah. like Jesus Christ. That's a yeah. that's a bad. Like, it was like seven k views, and it had like two hundred comments. Okay. And I like think, that's like massive. And when, when Ben was on about NPC business business owners, like when I spoke to a few few people that I know in business, when I said that I'm releasing a course, they're like, why? Like, what? Why are you doing that? So. Yeah, it's stupid, man. They don't understand, but, like, the whole ecosystem of it. It's just MPC, but, like, the so. knowledge that we've built up, it's taken ages for us to acquire that, and all of it is inside that course, which I think is stupid. Like, you're going to need to find out anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. You can you can go... You can, Yeah, fair enough. Don't pay £197 mm -hmm. and go through more potential losses that you're gonna and more mistakes that you're going to make on your own. Waste more time. If you want it as efficient as possible, minimising your risk... Like spending £187 pound is actually minimizing any sort of future financial risk, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, because you're gonna you're gonna make that risk anyway, so you're gonna lose more than £187. Pounds, so yeah. well even so, yeah, like with with what you guys have done, obviously it takes time, effort, and energy for you to understand what everything you're doing. Exactly, as well. like for me, like, and that was it. Like, even when I started my business, right? Like as aftermarket as a whole, like I'd been resell like so I've been reselling like training stuff like for eight years now. And when I started aftermarket, I I think it was like six years I've been doing it. And when I started, the amount of people, from people like in my area, they were like, fucking hell, Jack's dropped on, and he like, he's like, it was like, oh, he got fucking lucky there. But it's like, you didn't see me fucking like doing mm. all nighters, like trying to fucking secure products or like me doing something religiously every weekend or like even sometimes like every day of the week for six years. Mm. Like, and then I put all of that knowledge into the business and then you think I just got lucky. Yeah. And just like, no. It's like people don't think like that. It's like everyone wants to pass it off because then again, it allows them to think, oh, he just got lucky. So Literally. like that wouldn't happen to me. Yeah. Like it, it, again, it justifies it in their mind that that it was an anomaly that I mm. managed to do that and that they couldn't do it themselves. When in reality, pretty much anyone could go out there and get pretty much anything they wanted if they actually just give it a go. Yeah, literally. Like, I mean, I don't want to name drop people, but like, Obviously, based on TikTok, there's some very big people out there that are incredibly stupid, but have managed to make like a very decent life out of themselves. So it doesn't require any intelligence to actually like get rich. Hard work, yeah. effort. Yeah, exactly. And, that's all, all and it it's, it's just been like you said, it's just been open minded to try and make revenue, or income Literally. from from a, an alternative means. Yeah. And as soon as you like, for me, it was like, did I ever dream when I was fucking twelve years old that I'd be making like thousands of pounds in a day from? adidas trainers no i didn't mm. but i give it a go and it worked and then i carried on like for you guys about when you were fucking like like for you you said you thought you could be an accountant you never thought you'd be classifying yourself as selling dingus not a chance no exactly but you were yeah. open to the idea mm -hmm. of doing something else and it's not having it's about not having that closed mindset yeah definitely it's a thing as well like so we've we've lease options with what we did with property um obviously i was saying all these ideas when i was 17 saying to the family oh, that's what i'm gonna do this what i'm gonna do that and i'm like oh, yeah, yeah yeah like sort of like, yeah yeah of course you will yeah. or you're like you're not in the real world yet it's not gonna happen and all that bollocks and then obviously we've got 15 now and then that conversation's just like i don't know i've done that yeah exactly but they didn't see everything that went on behind the scenes yeah. they don't know how much money we've put into it they yeah. don't know how much time effort energy and when, when you say that like your when when you welcome to the real world that's like for them that's their idea of just being in Protection the rat race yeah, like yeah, yeah like mm -hmm. that being in the rat race but you say hey no i don't have to step into that world mm -hmm. i don't i don't want to fucking be there so yeah. i'm gonna if i if i <laughs> if i do have to go into it i'm gonna get straight out yeah exactly like that. the the idea for me of like i always like the the thing that made me realize it i've said it quite a few times on the pod is like my uncle who's quite successful said to me like it isn't a dress rehearsal mm -hmm. and that for me was the thing that changed everything like, because when you realize that you only get like one go at this, Scary. why would you not do everything you can to make this life the best life ever? And I also think that, like, I want to have kids one day. I want to have family. I think it's fucking irresponsible and selfish of me if I'm not doing everything that I can now to build something that's going to benefit their future. Mm. Yeah. Like, I want, like, my family to be taken care of. Like, that's like a responsibility that I've taken on before I've got one. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I've used about family and that have kind of changed, but I, I, I've always said that if I ever had a kid, like I'd want to be financially stable before I had one. Yeah, I think we're just looking at. Yeah, I think I think kids as well. I think that's a very very good point that I want to bring up. I think uh, there's a lot of business relates to it, but I think when 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 two when two people are in a relationship and it starts going south, I think the kids are like a solution for that. And I yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. stupid. 
Yeah. 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 People do like, oh, well, this will save it. And that's a detriment. That's a, I know it sounds bad as well, but that's their detriment in life. Like they've kind of fucked their life, like their financial means, because now they've got responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. And it's also not fair on the kid, really, is it? Definitely. Not they're going to have to yeah. grow up with a broken like. And that's like, how a cycle continues. Yeah, yeah. And then they're growing up around it, and then the people yeah, they expect exactly nothing. That. Like yeah. they expect to follow the same suit. Yeah. Actually, do you say any of you do business in uh, uni? I did account in business finance. Man. Yeah, because fucking. How did you? Did was your business per? Oh, was it not business though? No, I did, the business well, lecturer business. did they yeah, have yeah. a business? No, the fuck. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's yeah, bollocks. This is, like, there's like, I, we like, um, this is it's always good. That thing in it, like, if you were that fucking good, you would be running an empire. Literally, yeah. but you're not. Mm -hmm. Like, we, like, I even had like one of my modules. It was so fucking stupid. It was called <laughs> solving international management problems, and the actual fucking course, like, we were just doing drawings and like, like mind mapping stuff out, like, and it was just so much bullshit, Mental. like. That it was like if I could have like let's say bought your course and made and like we've spent the same amount of time, I'd be in a well better place and learning how to solve inter international management problems that are never going to serve me. Yeah, literally. I say it so much, but I've learned so much more in a five ten minute conversation than I did it two years at my A level business lesson. Like it's yeah. stupid, man. Exactly, and that's and that's where it comes down to as well. Like who like when I think once you like you guys like you weren't going to like networking events and stuff like that, I'll leak coming out and doing stuff like this, like when you sort of push yourself out, when you start surrounding yourself with people like that, like, cause for me, I never thought like, I never, well, for example, never knew Marx existed. Yeah. Or like there's other people in Manchester that we've been introduced to, done podcasts with, that before like stepping out of your comfort zone, you don't know exist. But then when you find people with the same mindset, like the, the focus, like and the talk just becomes around business, like, and around how you can boost business. Like there's been times when we were sat, like I had Harry and Marcus here and, all we did all night was talk about business, like mm. and marketing strategy and stuff, but it was completely fluent. Like yeah. we wasn't forced. And yeah. then we, we literally said like, I wish the cameras would have been on all night. Cause that would have been a banger of a pod. That's what we said before. Yeah, this yeah, literally. And yeah. that's the thing. That's what happens when you're not around the people that are just like, oh, right, nine to five. Uh, I'm going to clock off from work at five and then I'm going to go and fucking sit have and sleep. Have a wank. Else. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Have a wank. <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe watch a football life. tonight. But like, yeah, generally when I was with my like fucking old mates, like I used to go to football and then like, it'd be like a 20 minute car journey for the first few minutes or I was job, watch football. And then after that, it's dead silent. But like us, us now, like I've ne we've never spoke to you in our lives, yeah. but like we've been able to have like this, this yeah, chat. And then literally said, we were probably chatting for about a fucking hour before. And yeah, we just about anything and everything. Them cameras should have been rolling. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true though. And it's, it is scary though, but like it is so true. Like the conversation was dead. Yeah. We don't have any mates now anyway, mm, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Like, we, it was just uh, twos. Because the, the other group sort of like, we, we, as soon as we started getting out there, we just became the mockery. Like as we started to grow, because no one was watching the videos. We get no views, get no traction. And we were just the mockery, weren't we? Yeah. Um. Then, yeah, it was fucking- But then like, that's the thing. It's like that. You've been proving them wrong now. Yeah. And it's going to be that point when you're fucking sat on your empire and you can just be like, well, look, I, I was one that fucking tried. It worked. Yeah. But and, I, I, and then I, they're 40, have two kids, hit the life. Yeah. And they're hit like the 20 on the year. I honestly did like so much good for them. And like, I tried to do so much good for them within business as well. Like, uh, like try and get them to do certain stuff to make money, but like none of them would have it though. Previous, that's what I was talking about in the previous podcast where, where I started training reselling. All my mates were like, fucking hell, it's mad that. I was like, all right, let me show you how to do it. No interest. Like, yeah. I was like, right, come and do this with me. Do this, do this. No, like they just like, and I was like, it's mind blowing how you love the idea of the money, but you're not willing to put any work in exactly. to get it. Irresistible. I can remember that there was a couple irresistible offers we gave to mates in the group. I'm like, do you want to, do you want to partner with this? And like, just come together with it. Give it a think over. Yeah. Oh, that sounds a bit risky. Oh, let, I'll let, get back to you tomorrow, and then let yeah, me give it a deep, get, deep. Let thing. me have. Let me. Let me have twenty four hours. What the fuck do you need twenty four <laughs> hours for? It's yeah, literally. Stupid man. And now the customer service advisors. No disrespect to customer service advisors, but fuck you. <laughs> and that's it. it but it is. It's true because we 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 were sort of laughed upon. We were sort of like mocked and ridiculed and stuff. But they're the ones losing now. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, exactly. it's ridiculous. They don't see they don't see risking that though. Like I see risking them. It's like they constantly thought when when that twenty four hours they decided they wanted that offer. It's like oh, I'm risking this. Like, what are you risking? Yeah, yeah. It's stupid. So, this is it. I was watching a clip on it the other day, but it's like the biggest risk of all is staying comfortable in your nine to five forever. That is yeah. the biggest risk you can ever take. Like yes, starting your own business is risky, mm -hmm. but isn't it more risky to go your whole the whole way through your life? in something that's never gonna, that's Definitely. gonna cap you. Even a massive business venture, if you think, oh, it's like, it's going up, going down, it eventually goes up and then you eventually fail. 
yeah, it's a risk, but for like a few years and then you have to like start again. But like you have that knowledge now, just start back up yeah. again. So you're not starting from here yeah. or from here. You're starting from 10 times more. Yeah, yeah and everything's learned. accelerated. Yeah, exactly. And oh, what was I going to say? I keep fucking just forgetting. Like <laughs> my mind's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to add on to that conversation and then I forget. Um, but yeah, I feel like you've got, oh, that's it. And you, you sort of, I, I'm, I'm quite big on, and, and so is Chris, obviously, um, being emotionless with money. I yep. feel like there's, you have to be that to a certain level in business, quite emotionless to it. Yep. It has to just come in and make decisions based upon the, whatever's in front of you, not being yep. like, what's going to happen? Like if I lose my money, yep. nothing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous too. And especially I guess that with like sort of the car trade, that's like got to be key because yep. you've got to like expend, like, like at the end of the day, like you've, You've got to be handing money out all mm -hmm. the time to keep yeah. getting stock back in. Exactly. But it, it comes up financing as well, because finance, well, not like, not as in the typical terms of finance mm -hmm. with BMWs, but like getting finance to like, to scale your business, it's incredibly valuable for cars. Leverage but, is massive like, anyway. I, like I wouldn't dare, I wouldn't dare take finance off someone if I was going to be emotional with it. Yeah, like yeah. if, if when emotions are mixed with that, it, it, it can become extremely dangerous. Have so. you, have you done that to expand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we currently use like with auction, we use stocking loans, which are like incredibly, it is class. You get, uh, it's with BCA and then they basically give you the money to buy that car on the day. Uh, there's a certain, certain fee if you do that per car and then you just pay a bit of APR on the back of that when you sell it. So what does it work out like that? It, like probably like, especially for us, it's probably about like a hundred quid in fees, which is absolutely now for like, Considering we didn't outlay the cash and we also profit from it, but people are like, nah, they're taking a hundred quid off me, type of thing. Yeah, like, well, yeah, but not, no, it's like no, you're I'm making using from that. It. Yeah, I'm yeah. using their money instead of I'm using their money. Like I'm, instead of I'm forking out my own money to make five hundred quid, I'm using their money to make four hundred. Yeah, it's the same thing. The conversation I've had with my dad tw like two million times with like about mortgages with property. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not giving, like, nah, I'm, not, I'm not paying that much in a mortgage. I'd rather just buy it cash. All right, so you're going to buy that property in 20 years time with cash that you've had to save up or you're just going to start with leverage and get loads of them in line. Yeah. And, or it's just, oh, nah. <laughs> Honestly, it's bonkers. But yeah, leverage when used in business just accelerates everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, because it looks, it looks like someone normal. It looks like someone's bought a car and it's just gone west. Uh, but yeah. We've... It was proper like malicious type way. It was like, it was, it was as if they bought a car from us. It was like the way they word it. Yeah, the way like, that, like, like there's a lot of intelligence, not a lot of intelligence, but it's been a lot of effort into like actually creating that review and Why, making what, us look what, bad. What sort of stuff do they say? Well, I'll get it up now. It's fucking yeah, stupid. It's but like, we don't, we don't brand it anywhere. Like pe the way people have found it yet is we, we're on Auto Trader. People have, like people have seen the types of cars that we've got. So like a Vauxhall Corsa 2010 on 8,000 miles. And they've put that into Auto Trader. They've found our ad, uh, and then they've like gone on our on, on our Google page and started doing that. It's a lot of effort going. So is that why, like, down. for example, today? Because I was thinking that is that why you want to be introduced as only not only HMRC's is most wanted, but as just uh, Chris and Ben the car. No, no, we're not asked. Like, as I said, that's what I was. Yeah, I was going to lead on to that just to say that we we when we first started, we were like, oh, we were concerned that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then like now we couldn't give a shit. Like we've we've already got the worst that can come yeah. of like people commenting on our business page of yeah. like what it is that's just false information. And that was it for me. That was part of it for me as well. Like I, the worst like that like I thought could ever happen was like the stuff like the death threats. Yeah. But then when you realize- Second nature. <laughs> no one's, yeah. That's a good instinct to have. Literally. Yeah, I don't want to die. <laughs> but when, when you realize that nothing is going to happen. I remember someone in a group sent me like a message saying like, Jack, I thought you should know about this. And someone had basically found um, found my home personal address, like when, when, I was, when I was living with my mum and dad, they'd posted it online in this group and they're like, right, let's all do this. Like loads of people like rallying up. What happened? Like there's probably hundreds of people in the comments that all say like, we've got his address, like all these fucking gaming nerds because they were angry because we were selling PS5s. Yeah. What happened? Nothing. Yeah. Not one thing. We we always get we always get told our cars are gonna get petrol bombed like every single day. Happily do it. The gates are open for you, and then <laughs> yeah. like nothing happens. It's just it's just like pointless comments. It just is what it is. You just gotta get used to it. So yeah, yeah. all people that can't get the knob up anymore. <laughs> no, <they laughs> should, yeah, but yeah, themselves. here they are. So yeah, for these fucking dosses. Uh... Oh yeah, there's even a screenshot from our TikTok of us at the dealership, um, like the dealership video that banged and so. So yeah, recent as well? uh, that was no a month ago. Unprofessional. I've tried emailing and calling multiple times. Never picked up or answered my email. Why? 
poor, poor attitude, uneducated teenagers running the business, very unprofessional. I would not risk any amounts of money with them. If you're going to buy a car off these bellends, then you're asking for trouble. And then, yeah, all the, all, like, that's what I mean. Like, you can quite clearly see that we're decent because the rest of the reviews are all five star and that. But, like, literally, you ask people classes. to leave them. Yeah, but it's much more harder to get, like, yeah, actual yeah, reviews. Yeah. reviews. Yeah. And a lot of the time with, with these cars that we're selling, it might be like, I've had a few times where it's been like a certain thing might not have been gone smoothly or something. So I don't really feel like asking for yeah, a review yeah. at that time. Probably get a one star review because of that. Remember one time it was like this car, so it was like, just needed to rid of it. And like, I jump started it before they came. Uh, so, so I left the engine on. So it's fine when they came in that. But then literally, uh, they had a test drive. It was sound, all of that. Literally a few minutes down the road, like the car just like filled up with petrol and just died. So I had, I had to come out with my fucking jump pack and then start it again. But yeah, a few, but I, I wouldn't say, yeah, comeback wise, barely any though. Yeah, literally. Nothing. Go on. I was going to say, it just baffles me because time's such a big, time scares me, I think, at this point in time. Time proper, even as silly as it sounds, we're only 19. Yeah. And like time passes by so quick. We've got so many like plans, ambitions, and goals to achieve. And like, do you know what I mean? And there's people That's, just dossing. Yeah, like, this, this exact thing happened to me. So I went um, I went back up to uni, um, like back up to York. That's where I studied. Oh, you um, went to York? Yeah, yeah. Oh, where, oh whereabouts? Okay. No, uh, which uni? Of uni of. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. No, no, no. It's uh, the actual, like where you were staying at. The accommodation. So, so I've said, so I stayed, first year I stayed on halls. Yeah. Second year I stayed in a place called Tang Hall or Tang something. Yeah. Which yeah. is really rough. Like it's like is one it? of the worst. It's known as like one of the worst like estates in the UK for crime and stuff. Ah, York's not bad. Uh, York's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think it was bad, but it's, it is like, and every night you would get like police cars crawling. Really? Like yeah, like it was it was bad, like there. Fair enough. And then I stayed in the centre of York, a place called Tudor Castle. Um, where was I going with the whole uni thing now? I completely forgot. You're saying about coming back and people. That was it, yeah, yeah. yeah. So was coming back. Uh, I went back with my missus um, and we stood like to go in a cafe and I literally like started having like a bit of a fucking panic attack because we were on about stuff and I was like, 25 now. I'm like, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Like nowhere near. Yeah. And I was like, it's not like I think you're like twenty five, right? I'm probably gonna end up having a kid in like five years. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. like my missus like wants to have kids like before she's twenty eight, she's two years below me, so I'm gonna be thirty. Like like what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like I've not like it feels like time's on the clock and I was like panicking like like to a lot of people like they'll think yeah, but you're, you're miles ahead. You're doing well. But then towards like, it's like, yeah. no, like the clock's ticking. Like Literally. every second fucking counts. You yeah. know, what? it's it's bonkers because I'd say in business, my only stress is time. And it's it's weird because I know intrinsically, if I dig deep and think, why am I feeling like this? Or why am I feeling, what, what's stressing me out at this moment in time? It's time. Yeah, Because yeah. we've got so many plans, as I say, goals, yeah. projects going on. Like it needs to be out now. Yeah, yeah. And, and no one's got that mindset. No, and especially that's something that I find annoying when you work with like other people. Like, let's say if we were working with another firm and they just move so slow, yeah. And you're like, I want to, I want to execute now. Yeah, like this is the thing about us. Like, we know plenty there was, of well, there was this car, like, because like with this brand that we're gonna like release very soon, there's gonna be a lot of bolts on, bolt ons. Uh, it's just car cleaning. He's he's really sound in that, but uh, it's fucking not going anywhere. So mm. like, we're we're planning on doing something else, but yeah, it's fucking. Some like reliability in business when people aren't reliable, it's like and one speed, of the most annoying speed, things. Yeah. Speed's vital with, with, with like, business. for example, like with us, like, for our, like our businesses, like being young and sort of quite small businesses, we can be agile, yeah. we can change direction today if we really want. Mm. Like, we can we can alter something or like jump or do whatever we've got to do, we can be flexible to suit a trend. Mm. But when you're working with these dinosaur old companies, it's like, oh, well, we've got to go through HR. It's got to yeah. go with, well, it doesn't go through this policy that we've set. And it's like, it's a bullshit fucking policy. Yeah. Let's just get the de the deal done. Even say, so even saying that, even the small people that we know in, in, in like business in general, like we're like, where is your sort of fire? Like, where are you going to like take action on this? Or yeah, like, yeah. we can go now. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's mental. Like, so we got that motivation where it's like, come on, let's do it. Let's yeah. start, let's execute this. Let's get results. Let's fucking start making some extra money. And then other people just, they just don't have it in them. Yeah, it's, it's weird that as well when when people have that, but like, the, like when we're on about passion and that, but people don't want to grow more as a business and it's weird. Like, we're on about NPC business owners, like 
oh, so are you do you doing proper well at the moment? Like, well, what's the next step? He's like, well, I could potentially do this, but I don't want to do it. I was like, why not? And yeah. then it's all these like small little shitty things. I know things. people that, yeah, have built the business to a certain point and they are, that I know for a fact that they could take it way further. They've got like yeah. foundations too. So mm. many. And, but they're like, nah, I can't be asked. Yeah. Nah. And, like, and it's just like, I'm, they're like, well, nah, I'm happy with it as it is. But for me, like every time I've hit a goal, I've been like, I've, I remember like thinking like when I get to a thousand people signed up, like that, that's going to be mad. Then I'll be happy. Then it happened. <laughs> it happen. We hit, when we hit the um, seven figures, mm. thought like this milestone is going to come and then I'm going to be like, like, it's going to be like great. And it was just like, all that happened, Sam come over to me, shook my hand, well done, straight back to desk. Yeah. And then we didn't celebrate. There was no, we didn't go, we didn't do anything. It was just, right, well, where, what's the next step? And yeah. then the next milestone's eight figures. Like, and it's when like, even like getting to a certain point monthly and thinking, right, or oh, this is what I'm doing a monthly. Like, you always set that target. It's like, I say it to Sam all the time. Like, and we laugh about it because I'm like, right, if we get to this amount um, or I can build the business or whatever new business I'm working on to this level, that's going to be sick. And then mm -hmm. as soon as we get there, then it's like, right, let's just get, a little bit higher so that we've got a bit of a buffer. And then we get a little bit higher and then it's like, right, so what's the next leg up now? Yeah, so it's, it's a the, constant cycle. It's of, the entrepreneur's so, curse, yeah. I guess. It's yeah. constant. You know that though, when you say about seven figures, what, what was it, like seven figures in the bank or something? No, seven figures revenue. Oh, right, right okay. That's yeah, yeah, I was going to say. I wish I had seven figures in the bank. <laughs> but I, 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 like, I, I don't understand when people have like millions in the bank though. Like, what are you doing with it? Like, yeah, yeah. like, I, like we, we could... I, I, know, I think it's very hard to like say like how like how rich you are or whatever when like everything like all of our money in the future is just going to be in business. So yeah, yeah. you get invested straight back. We don't see any of the money we get. So how, how am I going to be a millionaire? It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all in yeah. assets. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. And that's the goal. But yeah, no, it's, it's funny you say that, you know, people, because there's a lot of businesses that we know, like if you do this or you do that, you do that. Nah. It's, yeah. I, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get how once you've reached a certain level, like where, what, why the hunger goes, like why is mm -hmm. the fire not there anymore? Mm. Definitely. But I feel and that also relates to depending on why you started as well. I feel like a lot of them either, if they just want like materialistic things, you'll get to that point, you may get some materialistic things, realize you're unhappy and then just is what it is. Yeah. But if you've got a great purpose always, then there's a reason to keep going and going and going. Um, which is again, we, we like it was only the past, I'd say five, six months where we really realize oh, this is our end goal. This is what we were striving for. That that um, same thing like came to me probably, probably around about, uh, probably maybe midway through COVID because when I'll always be open and honest, like that when I started the business, I was like, I want money. Yeah, same, like, yeah. exactly the same. Mm. That was it. And then as soon as I got into it, for me, it was like when, cause obviously with COVID, like, with people that were coming to us, like people that have been, let's say lost the job and then they were used depending on us for money. And then seeing like that we'd done stuff like we'd, let's say help supported someone. So, or we've um, like, we've paid for people's weddings essentially from the profits they made from us, or we've helped them buy a new house or mm. buy a car or the young people where they've been able to use the profits to get driving lessons. So the parents don't have to pay for it. It's all, it's always like now, like my goal and purpose is to keep building the business to keep having that positive impact Definitely. because that it's it does like and as long as you're having a positive impact the money will always come with it because when you're doing good and you're creating like you're creating good for let's say the, the small economy that we live in then you're naturally always going to do well and if you're i think if your mission focus is always on i want the money it's like that the money's going to run yeah but if you focus on an, something that's actually fucking good and like building like let's say building a business like you guys want to do or like building like i want to do then you're sort of that's the way that you're actually going to get to a certain level of wealth. You yeah. can't just be focused on, I just want to have seven figures in my bank account. It's just, that's not going to happen. It's mental. It's the, it's the greater purpose. So we, we're looking to build a charity foundation. Um, Obviously there's a lot of issues in the background that's like we've experienced and that's what we want to build. But like too many people are just wanting, oh, I want this car, I want this house. Why do you want them? And yeah. they're not digging deep enough. They just want it. Yeah. And a lot of it's too flex on them, which again yeah. is, is a shame in itself and, and just sort of, it just shows what society yeah. like type we live in. We've we've just partnered with a charity to help people that are in low, let's say, uh, so people that maybe aren't out, they're out of work or they can't possibly get work. Like so, let's say they're a caregiver mm. and they can't um, they can't leave the house because they've got to look after someone. Mm -hmm. So we're working with them now 
to like have a positive impact on those people. Like, and I never thought when I started out that we'd be able to build something that would a charity would want to come and work with us. Yeah. Like when I met the CEO of that, like he shook my hand like six times in the business meeting. He was like, fucking hell. I like I didn't realize that this was possible. Like he didn't know that it was a platform like I was out there. Mm. So for me, but then it's like fucking, that, this is what feels good. This is why we do it. So how, how does that work then? With, uh, like, how, how, yeah, how does it work? We just with mentor you? them. Oh, really? We, we, we bring them all Sick on. That. And then we, we basically bring in, so it's hard to get them in um, because a lot of the people who are there, it's not necessarily because they can't work. It's a lot of them are choosing not to work. Yeah. Mm. And, um, but they, they sort of work with the charity to show that maybe show universal credit that, look, I'm trying to get a job. Yeah. But yeah then we definitely. offer it to them and a lot of them don't take it up. But the ones that do, we've just started this week um, with sort of our first proper official intake um, of people that we're going to build. And like, I, like for me, it was like, I had a call with one of them yesterday like about like just like a one-to-one and understanding their goals and stuff like, and he's like, fucking hell, like this guy was telling me like your short-term goals, long-term goals and like what we want to help him do. And it's like, if we can pull that off, like I know that I'm going to have a massive impact on someone's life mm-hmm. and that's why like we should be doing this shit. Definitely. Like to yeah, have quality. Because that's yeah. the thing, like I always said, my goal now is that if I can like, like when I fucking leave the earth, if people say like, I'm thankful that Jack was fucking there and he did that, then I'm happy. I can die happy then. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And then, but if you've got that mindset and like you, you work like that, then I don't think you're ever going to worry about money in your life. Yeah, for sure. And so. it's, it's, there's a quote that really resonated with me was, oh, I always, it's it, no, it was definitely Andrew Carnegie. It was Andrew Carnegie. Or di- no, it was definitely Andrew Carnegie. And um, he said he spent the first, he was like back in the 19, like 1900s. Uh, he spent the first half of his life uh, accumulating wealth, yeah. half of his life giving it all back. And that's yeah. exactly the mission with us. Um, Cause again, I, I'm going to keep saying it, but it's so true. And I think a lot, a lot of people need to like become woke to the fact yeah. that you do need a greater purpose. Cause like, yeah, yeah chase materialistic things, look at people, there's billionaires, millionaires that have got seemingly everything, but internally they're just sort of gone. There's, there's nothing there. Yeah, they are. they're not, they're not fucking happy. Again, is, it goes back to questioning, like, like what, what do you actually want to do? Like, why are you doing this? And people don't know themselves. If you can find your purpose. But and, that, and that's the thing as well. Like, like for us, like it didn't come straight away. Mm-hmm. Don't expect to fucking know from day one. Mm. Like, because for me, like, I, that's why I, I'll openly admit that I was just focused on the money. Yeah. Because, I don't think that like, yeah, that got me into the business. But then when you realize what your business can do or what you could do out of your business, like you guys wanted to do a charity from it, like then you find the, the your why mm-hmm. and it won't necessarily be about money anymore. Yeah, for sure. And again, that's what, that's what we were like. We were like, oh, we're going to have these many properties. We're going to have all these cars and shit. And it's just going to be about the flexing. That's what, that's exactly, exactly what you were. Yeah. I, I think money. that's what like, but that's the sort of mindset that probably TikTok develops, yeah. isn't it? When you mm-hmm. go on and you see, Dropshipper Central, where it's just Dubai, Lambos, jet skis, boats. What was it? What's the ad called? Um, J- Jason. This might just be the easiest way to make money online. And it's just all that <laughs> bollocks and stuff like that. And just, oh, Jesus Christ. And, and it's just breeding it constant. Yeah. It's and, mad. And, and it's the, I think, well, have you guys, um, do you guys follow like HS TikTok here? Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, to this be is, fair, is this live at the moment, like, yeah, yeah to be it fair, it's, we could cut no, it. No, yeah, he, he's, he, he, no, he, 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 is, <laughs> he is, he is, he is a boy, but I think at the same time, he is a bit of a cunt, like. No, he's a G, but like, yeah. he's obviously what he's doing. Like, I, I know, obviously anyone in business can see what he's doing. He's obviously promoting, obviously he's, he's, he's big. He's obviously got Ed. I don't follow much of it, but obviously. I think big. he's a legend. He is, he, Ed. he's the man. Yeah, I think Ed. Ed. Yeah, They've yeah, got yeah, an yeah. easy influence and they can sell on the back of it that people yeah. that will buy. So it's fair I think enough. his audience, I think is very, like, I think ours is around our age, but I think his is a bit younger. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like him, like, Fucking young lads, a bit getting, like preying on the vulnerable. That's yeah. what I mean. It's, they're getting horny over that, and like he's got a, he's got this. So like Tate now he's kind of got a cult audience yeah. where they do anything, and especially with that crypto thing, I yeah. think it's fucking horrendous. Yeah, he's got two hundred twenty-seven thousand in his in his yeah, Telegram. Yeah, I think mad. it's shocking, man. Like the, I think that what he's done is super smart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, I agree. He's fostered a huge audience mm-hmm. and then been able to monetize that audience, yeah. and that's like. Great. I, th- um, I think it's great, but I think that, the way that but, he's mon- but, monetized it is a bit like that's the question, bit. and that's like yeah, it's what where what's your integrity around yeah. that? Yeah. And, and for me, like it's I don't know because I've not done it. I don't know, but like and he and he always posts people getting results and stuff, <laughs> and like but you just you'd never fucking know. Do you? But the, yeah. but the the principle in getting started with it, I think it's terrible though. Like how like how like the crypto like how the course starts and that is just nah. Don't and don't he agree do, with and it. because at the end of the day. He actually doesn't care 
whether you win or lose. Oh, yeah, he won't fucking do it himself, yeah. though. No, exactly, he doesn't. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's the wild oh, thing. Does he not? No, no, no. no. He, he says he has someone that trades for him oh, on his behalf. Bit, but it's, it's just stupid. like, you. it's when, two years ago, you would never have said it would be a good idea to take financial trading advice off HS Ticky Tom. Mm-hmm. No one, that, those words would not, not have left anyone's mouth ever. So it's like, for me, like he could have done something, like even if he would have carried on with like Joey's clothing line and like the head fitness, mm. that was, perfect for yeah him. yeah definitely and, and has- selling, selling like the muscle plans as well yeah like it's 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 cheap and it's getting people to do a positive thing yeah. in their life for very little i think that's class and he made bank off that i don't see why he's got to do this little yeah, fucking it, daft crypto yeah, thing he did, there, there was Forex. longevity in that yeah definitely with, with this like the end of the day if he like ever stops this it'll be fucked yeah yeah because and- like it, the thing is he's got to keep it going forever now because he will just it will it will basically make him look to be a scammer but, if he does bail on it. Yeah. But there's not longevity in it though, because like at a time, like, yeah, maybe the odd person coming out won't look true, but when a, when an avalanche of people comes out the right the, at the right time at the at one specific time, it'll just look fucked. It'll snowball. Yeah, I do but again it's like what we I don't know if the camera's wrong what we're speaking about, but there's too many people in business that aren't seeing the, the bigger picture of yeah. where like there's no longevity in where their vision is. Just like money now. Yeah, like yeah. if you gave them a, a mill in 10 years or give them a hundred grand now. A lot it's like the stats in it. And it's a scary statistic on how many people have won the lottery and then are broke again. Yeah. Oh, like, and that's on. what it basically like, it just shows you the mindset of like the normal, normal nine to five person is get the money and spunk it. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's nothing else to it. It's, there's no, there's no sort of like ac- financial acumen around it and understanding that, well, if, I've just won 10 million on the lottery. If I play my cards right, I'm going to have generational wealth forever. Yeah, yeah, literally. Like you could, if you, like if you get to that point, like it it should be really hard. If you actually have anything about you, it would be really hard to fuck it up. Yeah. Mm. Like you've get, you've got, you've been gifted the best opportunity, like for generational wealth. Like. It's, it's weird as well. Cause it, it's only been recent where I've very, sh- it's very much shifted to like, m- like minimalistic ways of living. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, again, like, as I say, I only, I, again, I don't know if the camera's one, but I only wear black. I wear very little, like in terms of a wardrobe and stuff, there's nothing in it. It's like yeah. a t-shirt and trousers and um, one pair of shoes and shit. Um, and I've just, we don't need the additional objects in life. It's weird. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are spunking the money, ex- exactly what you said, on like cars that they don't need, houses they don't need, all this excess material objects that are causing the stress anyway. It's weird, but yeah. It definitely does. It definitely does, not I, I feel like even, well, I think, I think sort of the, the thing that will always be with us is that because essentially we start from scratch, we, yeah. weren't, we weren't gifted a million pounds by our parents. We started on our own that even like when we're making money, still purchasing something that might be 500 pound a grand, that's just like whatever it is, mm. that's still painful, no matter yeah. how much money you're making. It's still not, you're like, ooh. Like I used to like have to work like fucking two weeks for this. I, I, and again, to be honest, like, just, to, just to add on to that, I feel like not enough people think how many hours have I just worked for yes, this? Yes, that was always yeah, my mindset. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's obvious. Like, when I was in think. that factory job, that made me realize like, I wanted, like, if I want to get a t-shirt, like, essentially, I remember, like, one of my first purchases, like, and I'll always say it now, like, I made 200 quid in my first week at work. I was getting 200 pound a week and I spent 180 on t-shirt. I, b- I bought a story pa- one time. Was it Palm Angels or? No, it was, fucking, it was like fucking Vivian Westwood. This was like Aww. years ago, like when Vivian Westwood was in. But <laughs> that was the thing. And then when you actually, after I did that, I actually deeped it and was like, I've just had to stand there for like, for, like that, there's like 30 odd hours of work that's just gone into that mm. and doesn't make sense. Oh, it's just it's just a crack for a lot of people. Like, yeah. you know what? I've, it's class that. Pisses me off though as well. Like again, it's my own ego feeling this way. And I know it is, but like when people are wearing all this bullshit and driving finance cars and they're in a nine to five stuck, got nowhere. But like people look at them and think they've got money. Yeah, and like yeah. just, oh. just- People just having the wool pulled over. Us. Yeah. Dude, I don't understand how- there's such like a lack of awareness around it and to not see through it. And I don't know why that is. I've, I've, but that's, again, do you not think like, I mean, I, I have no clue. None of us have a clue, but do you, what do you think? Do you feel like, what, what's your opinions when we say simulation? Like, do you, are you agreeing on that? What's your opinions on it? Cause do you not think that's weird that like the masses don't ask these very simple questions? Do you not think it's quite weird? I think it's so weird. <laughs> yeah. It fascinates me all the time. It's like, that is so weird. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. But it's like, I think it reflects the the huge sort of machine that 
whoever, let's say they are, have created they. over over X amount of is also minutes. very, very true. Because because at the end of the day, the like nothing has to really exist, does it? Like I mean, mm-hmm. like imagine like, and I know this is gonna sound weird, but like imagine if like money didn't exist and like all of this, like it's all just been fabricated yeah, to bring exactly to deliver whoever's at the top. Power. Yeah. They can control the world. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. everyone subconsciously is supporting that. Yeah. But like even us today, when you think about it, our money that we make, it gets deposited in the bank. Yeah. The banks are then using that money. Who controls the banks? They. Like, it's all, all came from control though. Like literally it's just a few people started <laughs> off with that control and then everyone works, works out with them. Yeah. Okay. And I still think like, why are you not thinking that though? Yeah, you know no, what I mean? No one like, no one ever questioned it. And no one, for me, it's like the, I, I will never ever, un- and I, I've said it a few times, I, I feel sort of almost envious that I'm not like that. Because yeah. life would be so much simpler. Yeah, we I'm always like, yeah. say, like, what stress do people actually yeah. have when they're at these like, jobs? Like, let's say if you're just in normal nine to five and you're happy that, I'm jealous of that because I could not be fucking happy in that situation. And like, I would tear my hair out. But, mm. Like, that's what I mean. Like, when I used to work at this office job, there used to be a lad next to me. Uh, and literally, he, he had a kid and he had one one dot, uh, a wife or whatever. He literally went to football on weekend, be at the, the pub with his mate a few days a week. And then he, he just seemed like so, so content with life just yeah, over yeah. that. And yeah. it's like, it's mental. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and that's the funny thing about that. Like a lot of sort of my mates from like growing up, they're all in that exact same routine. Like, and I think a lot of it as well probably comes from people that have like kids at an early age and then they get stuck where it's like, I need the security. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't take the risk anymore. Um, and then they've got a mortgage with the missus. They've got that and then they're tied down. Mm. But it's weird because they're all chasing that from a very young age. They're all on Tinder. They're all on, they're all going on, on a weekend trying to pull yeah. and everything like that. And that's how they get stuck from the, from the offset. Accidentally have a kid or intentionally have a kid. And then they are stuck sort of thing. Um, in the it's just all about part, lasses right? as well. Like everyone's so bothered about like pulling lasses and having lasses. I just don't see the point. Is that it. common? Was that common amongst your school and stuff as well? Like when you were back in school, was that like lasses the main thing? Because we we know I don't know if it's a county Durham thing or a Darlow thing, but fuck me, our um, old school like schoolmates were just that's it. Like I don't know. I don't know. To be fair, I don't because I feel really like the majority like like for example, my whole time through like high school and that like I was like single. Like no, none of my mates really. Like there was the odd few mate that would have a bird, but Mental like, for us, it wasn't that much of a big. But thing. I don't know. I feel like that's what everyone's chasing though. Like yeah. like when they like, oh can we can we do something tonight? And like it, it'd always be like we're off around like going out for the night. But like why do you actually want to go out? Yeah. Like literally nine times out of ten, it's just for lot, trying to fucking yeah. shag a six or whatever. Yeah, yeah literally mental. basic, like mid punani. That's what you were Yeah, yeah, but like that is an absolute waste of time. Yeah, one million stupid. percent. I remember we we literally went to MAGA with that same group of mates. It was shit. It was awful. Yeah. Um, but there was some of them were fuming. They didn't enjoy the whole day at all because they were only forced to try to pull. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not going for a lads' holiday. That's the thing. If if you go with the intention to pull, it's not going to happen. No. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. yeah. It's like like I've always said to Ben, like if I change change because of last. Uh, in front of you, just like literally, like slap me, like punch yeah, me, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, I used it. to like when I was on a night out with you know what you're doing, like walking around a club or whatever. Yeah. But like, I go up to my mates, like, oh, like, like try to like have a, have a laugh with them or whatever. They try to get with a lass. It's like they just like push, like don't push know me away. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they're actually embarrassed to know me. Yeah, like yeah. honestly, fuck me, just have a wank. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> so true. That, and as well, though, that's what a lot of like so much time spent chasing lasses. You know, yeah. like on again on Tinder and stuff. So much time and energy. Swipe Put it in. into something good. Yeah, like yeah. Tate's so true. Like, like they'll come if your intention is just to pull. It'll come with money and status anywhere. Yeah. It's so true. And that's the thing that I will always say. Like, the I, and that I've openly said this before. But for me, like, with my missus now, like, in terms of business, she's been the best thing that's happened to me in the past mm-hmm. year. When when I got with her, business was doing the worst. Mm. Since being with her, business more than doubled. And I will, obviously it doesn't. What well, I think it's super interesting because. I don't think that obviously like it's not like she's been directing my business. Mm. But what it it like again for me, it lit a new fire that I didn't know was there because when you actually start to think like for me now I'm 25 and I'm like, right, I need to actually start planning for the future. Mm. At some point, um, I'm gonna want to have kids, I'm gonna want to do this. Like when you actually start to think and like that unlock like a new level of motivation in me, and that when you've got someone by your side who's supportive at every single point in that journey, like invaluable. Definitely. But wasting your time on sixes is fucking stupid it's fucking yeah. ridiculous yeah. isn't it it's just like what are you doing and that, that for me like and, and that's it like i wouldn't even 
like with like my missus, like she's like fucking as a girl, like super high value, like really good career. Like she's going to be, she, I genuinely think like there's a massive chance that she will be more successful than me. So I'm not, wouldn't waste my time with anyone fucking less than yeah, that. Exactly. Like, and that's what too many people get caught up in the bird that like might look fucking good on TikTok, yeah. but he's a deadbeat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've, my, my opinion's kind of changed because I've always thought like, I oh, you know what, I've, I've always just wanted like, like a 10, just like fucking walking around. But like, the, <laughs> like the problems are just doing my nothing. Yeah, like yeah. honestly, like, oh, I don't look good. Like honestly, like I'm I'm happy to have a last at some point, but like it should be in that point of view. Like, it's gotta if, be that for me, I think it's definitely gotta be at the point when you're like fucking ready for it. It's right. For yeah, you. Like, one yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, and and for me, like it is, it's like getting to that point where it, it comes effortlessly. Yeah. Like you yeah. don't have to try. Yeah. Like it's like, and you want to get like, for me, it was like, yeah, let's, let me focus on myself, building the business. And then I know it will come. It's literally, that is what it is. Like what Tate and everyone says, like when you, when you do that, it then attracts like interest and then exactly it's easy. That. Like, and it's but like- they don't say that no, though. All our mates are like, oh, it just no, me off. no. I'm just like, so like, it gets, it's on Love Island, you know, when they're like, you know, I don't know if you've ever watched it. I don't know if any of you have ever watched, watched it, before, but you know, yeah. I'm going to have to like, oh, I'm going to have to put the, oh, what did they put in? Like the grafting. I'm going to have to yeah, put, yeah. put the grafting. Mate, what are you putting grafting for? Yeah, yeah. They either like you or you don't. Like, yeah, yeah. fuck off. Do you <laughs> yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's the same thing. It's like, a, and it's like the, like the, it'll always be the thing where it's like, Tate, or what Tate always says, it's like the guy at Starbucks, like as sad as it is, does not have a chance. Mm -hmm. No. Like, but if you do something, you get out there, like you start doing something, you will not have to have a second thought about it. Literally, so true. Yeah, I think as well, yeah, I, th I think it would be class to have a last, like that's what I mean, within business or within that sort of sense. So just couldn't be fucked have it. Like with my family, I'm having these conversations in 15 minutes, I'm getting bored. So yeah. like in that sense, it'd be class. And like, remember messaging lasses back in the day, like fucking, what are you watching on Netflix or whatever? It's just yeah. boring as fuck, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Can't be fucked having that. Got machine right here. Yeah, oh. can't, all the time. <laughs> Seven days a week. Yeah. Couldn't stop, man. Absolute can't warrior. stop, won't stop. Okay. What, 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 Plunge on top. So what for you guys now, like before we round it out, mm -hmm. bit of like, bit of like daily routine. How's it looking for you guys? Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm so OCD and rigid with routine. Like I need routine. I'm, I'm OCD as anything. Uh, but I wake up at six. Um, Chris is by mine at about half seven. So after a morning routine, getting things done like journaling, stuff like that, meditation. It'll pick me up at half seven. Um, we'll then drive to the pitch. It's about half an hour from us. And then the day starts from there. Um, Chris is more of the, just like the front end sales type of thing. I'm the back end. Um, and then we finish at half, set, half six. Go to the yeah, gym. go to the gym and then back home. But in terms Same of again. selling and shit, like you're more on that. You get twenty like, yeah, so it, it does vary to be fair. Like things, it can be a bit annoying. Cars come in all over the place. Fucking Dosses wanting to is come at a certain available? time. Is this still available? Is this still available? Is that what the, the automatic Facebook? Facebook yeah, 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 yeah. And then, so so it does. You need parts, so it does vary. But like as a basic structure, what Ben's implemented with me, it's like it's, it's brilliant because it's like it's getting to the pitch every single day, and then it's finishing at every single day at the same time. So I think having that, even though if your if your life if your business is very varied just to have a basic structure and that, that's what sets you up. Because I think in, in business especially, you need partnerships with like attributes that complement each other mm -hmm. and yeah. are more systems, procedures, back end, sales and marketing. Chris is more so the forefront pushing it, pushing it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what you need for it to work. Makes sense, makes sense. And are you guys like completely 50-50 and everything? You yeah, know? Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we share everything. the same bank account and everything. Like it's like- it, it Literally, it's like a married couple, like yeah. honestly, Oh yeah, everything. generally we've, we've been asked a lot, like are we a couple uh, and stuff like that? We're like, no, we're not a couple. <laughs> yeah. we're not no, a I'm, couple. Not, I'm not, not um, that way, mate. Not we're that not way. a couple. Um, but yeah, we get asked all the time and people on the outside sort of look at it like, that's pretty weird. Um, or like when- That's we, risky like, or like- When we want to, because our plan is just to keep finances minimal as anything. So we'll, we will buy a house together, 1 million yeah. percent. And again, the, the mask public will be like, that is very weird, but it's not. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. it's, it's strategic. Just get each other it and it's just like, yeah, just. And at the end of the day, like, you'll just be productive as anything then. Exactly. Like, everything will just step up. Like, we know guys that like, like, have done that, moved in like all together. And then like, everything just becomes like, it becomes subconsciously like 24 seven work. Yeah. Like, because at the end of the day, like, for example, we don't really like, let's say on an evening, you'd still naturally just end up talking about work. Mm -hmm. You'll get more stuff done, but it won't feel as if you're doing yeah, fucking work. Yeah, we're beautiful on a Saturday. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like a Saturday night at Shisha or something. Yeah, like, yeah like, exactly. We, oh, so that's it. Work. It's just, even though, like, even if you're just having a conversation on new ideas, 
you can it's still attributing to building the business and bettering it. And when you're in each of us presence all of the time, like mm. it's just gonna everything, it'll be like a, a churn factory, like just yeah. fucking leveling up. That's yeah. true. Serious churners, that's serious what they are. Serious churners. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's so true. I feel like massively on productivity is a main thing as well. I'm I'm big on that. Um, where you need sort of like deep focus in everything you do. It's harder for Chris as well because if he's doing the selling and stuff, there's a lot of time wasters in, in the yeah. car game. As and well. then just people coming in the office because like Ben, oh, Ben's, that Ben's, me Ben's off got so much. We, we've got like a, a porter cabin, so like sort of like this length. And like half of it's divided with like curtains. So Ben's all right. I'm still CD, so I want to shut myself off. So I've yeah. got a curtain up in the like, But then like I'm at the front and you, like we, we're on a site where other people are actually, you just get delivery men coming in during the day. Like, oh, and then yeah, he's around the back, mate. So it's, yeah, it's a bit annoying. And and Facebook Marketplace as well, that's full of dosses. So it can get annoying, but at the end of the day, it's just the industry. Yeah. One last thing as well, I want to ask. Do you think you guys from doing this at a young age, you've had any sort of negative negative from like being young in terms of maybe people approaching you as like a potential customer and like thinking because you're young like you'll be naive like have you do you feel like you've had anything like that or, or let's say you're trying to buy a car and you feel like people have tried to rip you off because you're younger i think no nah, i don't think with customers i think generally you could sell one at any age like you could i could go out in my pajamas right now and i could sell a car yeah. so i don't think it really matters i think maybe Younger, youngerish age, maybe, but uh, I don't think it matters too much. No, but us personally, if we experience it, yes. Like, yeah. But when we first started, it was we have we haven't received it in actually ages. It's funny you say that because yeah. I haven't even thought about age. Oh, to be fair, saying about property, yeah, that was all the we, time. Yeah, every time like we like with property and stuff, like people wouldn't take us seriously with what we were saying because our age. Um, there is some just weird people in cars that will try and have you over, mm. uh, but you sort of can see through it anyway. Um, but have yeah, have you ever been done over? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say fully. There's, there's definitely been times where it's like that. But I, like, I was thinking about this this morning. But I don't think we've ever like fully been stabbed in the back. But it's just like whenever I see it, like whenever I have a solid relationship with a trader around me, uh, I always think right. Generally, if I like, because like a lot of people when they're buying trade off me, they'll like fully have a test drive of it, thinking like that. But when I'm buying off a trader, like I like I won't even turn on the car because yeah. my relationship with them is if you sell me a shit car, like I'm never going to speak to you again. Like if you try and fuck me over, like that's yeah. that's it there. And what is the point of trying to have me over for a quick like few hundred pounds? Exactly, profit? like because then a potential revenue stream has just been exactly cut yeah. off. But like one of these lads that I work with, like he's down Leeds way, but like he's like constantly up and down like every week with us because he's that solid and he's never really let us down. It's been a few times where cars have been a bit dodgy, but like he's he's sound and it's that's still why moved. It's still moved. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why that's why we have thing. it with him. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah, I think as well, like trust is main thing. And I, I do, yeah. we do trust too easy in yeah, general. So true. we do sort of leave ourselves bent over a bit. Yeah. Um, but I think you have to trust people. Like yeah, it's yeah. pointless living like sort of cautious all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, constantly mm. like overly skeptical. And too many everyone. people are as well. Yeah, yeah. Too many people are yeah, too skeptical. Everyone's trying to have you off. Exactly. Yeah. So before we round it off, advice guys that you've got for anyone that sort of, let's say maybe we're in your situation, like didn't really... <laughs> Know what to do or I've got a business idea but haven't got the confidence yep. to start I would just say just do it like honestly just Nike just like what is the, what is the biggest risk just, just do it uh, yeah I'd 100% I'd say take action Um, time is very limited before you know it you'll be stuck deep into a 9 to 5 or a relationship or something that you just don't want to be in so take action now Um, and, and really what is the, the worst that can happen really banging pod pod Probably is my favourite pod ever. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that it. Belt, I appreciate man. it. Yeah. Belt, uh, <laughs> that was sick, that. Honestly sick. So, yeah. Thank you so much for having you on. And we'll get you on when the empire's grown. Honestly, if, are, you, are you mobile, like? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, well, when we come in, when, when, when our, like, dealership's fully done, like, you've got to come down. To get yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll do it. Do it. We'll do a part two. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll come down to film. Here for the part yeah, two. Yeah, part, for part two. two. Sick. Subscribe for part two, guys. <laughs> All right, thanks for going on, lads.